that intro what's up everybody thanks for joining the three poa podcast episode nine i'm your host laser pants aka ryan i am joined as always by my friend and the man behind analog toys mr tony roberts what's up tony um i'm good you know i'm actually really good today because i finally got my three poa t-shirt nice nice <laughs> Love it. Well, I'm going to have to settle for that, man. <laughs> uh, we are also joined by the man behind Action Force, the CEO, COO, CPO of Valiverse, Mr. The, Bobby Valla. The see everything. The see, <laughs> see and do everything, right? Is that... What's, what's what, up, what is man? That, is that Series 2? Ooh, it's Series 2. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. No, yeah, this series. doesn't make sense. This doesn't make sense because I was told series two would never happen. Really? I, huh. I read it. I read it on the internet. I don't. I wonder. Know. I wonder what genius said that. Probably someone mm -hmm. who knows a lot. No, yeah, knows a lot. Pro probably. Well, hey, you know I, I figured if you're gonna if you're gonna prove them wrong, you might as well do it. You know, quickly. So I figured, let's just jump a month sooner and get this stuff out beforehand. You know. <laughs> Sure, yep. I ruined a lot of, I'm sure I ruined a lot of people's days, you know? I know they want me to go away. I'm not going nowhere. Going nowhere. Staying right here. No. Uh, we also have a very special guest tonight. I'm very excited for this one. Me too. Jeff Hicks of World Class Bullshitters. Jeff, what's up, man? Hey, hey yeah, thanks for having me, guys. I'm so excited. I can barely speak. No, but uh, I'm excited because you asked me a while ago to be on this. I put it on my calendar. I've been counting down the days. I'm fans of all you guys, and we are all here for our love of toys. So I'm pumped. Like anything we talk about, I'm excited for. Yeah, yeah. You you've been running the world class bullshitters channel for six, seven years. Yeah, twenty fifth October twenty first, twenty fifteen, which is Back to the Future Day, is our launch. That's the day the podcast started, and that's the day I consider world class bullshitters starting. So we've been around for a while now. I was actually turned on to your channel. I think it was your first toy video when you went into Toys R Us mm. and were uh, filming the Force Awakens toys at the time. Star Wars is dead. That's the title card. I remember making that thinking, is that too extreme? No. And then everything picked well, up from there. So, Yeah. Um, well, I'm a big fan of your channel. Thanks for joining us. We are going to talk about not Toy Fair 2022 tonight. So... <laughs> yeah. Toy Fair 2022 was canceled again. It was canceled last year, canceled this year, but pretty much every toy company has been dropping everything anyway. They've been dropping all their new reveals, pre-orders, uh, digital renders, a lot of digital renders. That throws me off. Yeah. Pre-orders for stuff that's not coming out for until 2023, but we're going to go through it all and, and, and talk about it all. Um, Bobby, Series 2A. Speaking of toys, Series 2A, shipping. I've Not seen people shipping. with it already Shipped. in hand. Shipped. Shipped. We Shipped. got through, in two and a half days, we got through 90% of the orders. There's only about 200 orders left 
to go out Monday. And that's just because we ran out of a certain box size. Otherwise, mm-hmm. they would have all been done today. So my team is awesome and we don't waste any time. And uh, we got them out the door really, really fast. We, le- we learned a lot from series one and we were able to be a little more efficient this time around. And uh, listen, man, it's it's awesome. It's awesome to be able to get this stuff out to people like a month and a half after series one. Like that's kind of unheard of. Um, but yeah, man, it's exciting. It's cool to like see another round of figures. These ones are great. I love seeing the improvements from series one. And then, you know, we're still working on improvements for 2B and uh and and so on but man it, it's awesome uh you know we got tim kennedy it's exciting he uh he he sent me a picture of the first one signed that he's sending to me which is very cool um the the version two sarge is an amazing figure i mean they're all awesome rollouts great scarabs are awesome i'm i'm excited man um and it's cool it's cool to be able to deliver this stuff really quick i know i kind of mess with everyone with that video um but you know it's that's how i gotta do it if i'm gonna do it i'm gonna mess with you a little bit uh, but it was fun well thanks to your awesome, Bobby, is is that t-shirt you're wearing oh my my, my fans my fans t-shirt this is for my fans <laughs> Wait, <laughs> uh we got a super chat uh jim largo thank you very much he says valiverse action force and a red solo cup America, F yeah. America. America. <laughs> mm. Thank you very much, Jim, as always. Oh, we got another one here from uh, World Made of Cardboard. Thank you very much, man. He says, Tony, looks like the action force behind you will not fall over like the Marvel stuff. Great display. <laughs> no, because they come with these awesome figure stands. Yeah. That was a great video you put out there. Um, and yeah. I, I, I wanted to address something. Yeah, obviously, I, I bumped the table at the beginning of the video. That was one take. I thought it was going to take me six takes. First take, the whole table fell over. But every other figure that falls over in there, like Captain Carter falls over, um, the Hydra Stomper falls over, that all happened while I was trying to... And, and then when Thor falls over next to me, that just happened when I was trying to film. It naturally happened, and I was like... It was a really frustrating B-roll shoot, but I was like, actually, this is perfect. I'm just going <laughs> to keep all these mistakes and keep it in the video. So, Yeah. Hasbro is not a fan of stands, apparently. Or figures um, that can stand up. Right. <laughs> Listen, man, I, I pitched it. I can't tell you how many times I pitched it when I was there. Yeah. I thought man. they would come with Star Wars figures at one point. Weren't they? Wait, wasn't there a series that came with them in the early, like, 05? Luke, Jedi Luke uh, and Amazon Jedi Luke came with a clear stand that you kind of slipped his foot in. But that was, like, it. And I found it weird that, like, he came with one, but, like, other people didn't. It was it was weird. Very weird. Yeah, they, they shipped those, like, slipper stands. It, it went over the foot. They shipped those with, like, their exclusives for, like, one year. Okay. And then they, then they gave up on it. Um, and then one more super chat before we start talking Hasbro. Uh, Robert Diaz, thank you very much. He says, the collection of scum and villainy got even better tonight. You have the man who read My Immortal to the masses. Jeff is a man of culture. <laughs> Indeed. That was a long time ago. Put it like this. It's the only episode that ever gave me a headache. Like, I laughed <laughs> so hard. Ugh. Oh, right on. Well, thank you, Robert. All right. So, tons of reveals. I'm going to start with probably the Hasbro's biggest line at this point. Um, Whoa. Sal. Okay. Ooh, I, Sal. How dare I have to you? Get to, I have to get to that. Okay. Hey. Sal. What's up, man? Uh, <laughs> yeah. In fact, Sal, um, I met Sal through Jeff. We did a collector stream. It was, it's been like two years at this point. Um, That's when you guys met? Yeah. We met on that stream. Oh. Yep. We've been talking. Pretty much ever since. It's getting Sal's pretty serious. Yeah. <laughs> Sal was here doing fulfillment at the office. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sal, thank you for that very, very generous super chat. He says, El Beresidente Jefe. El Beresidente Jefe. Welcome, Duder. At work, <laughs> so I can't hang out in the chat, but I'll be listening. I've been waiting for this episode for weeks now. Four of my favorite people all in one place. Wish I could join. Love you all. But Bobby. 
the Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sal. I wish you could be here too, man. So, so right. Is it true? Uh, is it true, Bobby, that um Sal's been farting in some of the boxes, <laughs> particularly mine? <laughs> Only a select few. Mm -hmm. So lines of mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Years we had a number of people. So it's like it's ripe in there, bud. Ooh, okay, man. that's that's awesome. I'll get the this wife to open it on a stream. Those those, <laughs> those, uh, those blister windows are going to be yellowed. That cardboard is going to be rolling. Oh, be I rough. guess Sal likes me because all the packages he sent me in the past, like there were no farts, but it played the Beverly Hills Cop music when it opened up. So I guess he just. <laughs> I don't know. Damn. Oh Speaking boy! Well, which, yes, um, I just want to say I, I absolutely loved your Axel Foley video that you did for Iconicon last year. So. Thank you. Um, and, I, and I hear you're kind of going to be involved again this year. Yes, I've already talked to Sal. It's funny. I was I made the Axel Foley video, and I was like, "Oh, okay, maybe this is just a me thing. Only I'm the one that only one that cares about it." And then he's like, "Yeah, people liked it. We come back, blah blah blah." So I I know kind of what I'm working on. I guess I can talk to you off air because you know everybody knows everybody. But I'm excited to be a part of it. You know, I love uh, Retro Blast and Michael and Melinda are great. So it was cool to be a part of that. And I get yeah. to geek out about Beverly Hills Cop, which is rare because I don't know, man. Like Elton John's getting a new figure. Um, there's yeah. all kinds of people that are getting toys, and I'm like, it's Axel Foley. He's an action hero. Like he's not Rambo, but he's not lame. So it's like, come on, where's that? You know, when's it gonna happen one day? I might maybe, have to get you know, maybe it sounds like uh, maybe it sounds like a future Valiverse figure. Mm. Oh yeah. Well, I see you got Sergeant Slaughter. I'm a huge wrestling fan, so I'm just like, oh my god. <laughs> Unfortunately, if they do, if if anyone does Axel Foley, it'll probably be Super Seven because they do the more. Yeah, oh, um, dude, I found a place. I'll tell you the name off air, but I can get Super Seven figures. I got them for five dollars, like the Ninja Turtles. That's the only way I'll pay for them. Like it's about right? four dollars too much. Minutes. You said five dollars is too much. I said that's about four dollars too much. <laughs> I can't believe they're eighteen bucks. Like. Yeah, I, that's crazy. I bought into Super 7's Deluxe line, and I haven't seen one yet, so I'm a little hesitant because these toys are fine, but they're not amazing. I yeah. sent a message to the guys uh, before the show. I said McFarlane showed five POA DC figures that come with a comic book that he's selling for $10, and Super 7 sells the same dog shit for 18 I was like, uh, and I thought it was actually less. I thought it was 16. The guys corrected me that it was 18. Mm -hmm. And I was like, 18? So I don't want to hear crap about that they pay a royalty and this and that because the DC royalty is probably way more than the G.I. Joe royalty. So, you know, eventually people are going to, are going to like get on the train when I tell them that Super 7 is basically stealing money from people, but they won't learn. I'm he I'm worried about the Power Rangers set because we were joking about digital renders a moment ago. I kind of committed to pre-orders all on digital renders, which is mm -hmm. rare for me. But it's the nostalgia. It's the Power Rangers. That's the one line I can't say no to. And that's what they're banking on. They're banking on nostalgia. Dude, um, I got the three zero set right here in the closet. I've never even ooh. opened it, but like it's I can reach it if I really wanted to pull it down. I I love that show or love that show. Put it like that. That that's the one six one, the one six. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. I Those got are set really with the Green nice Ranger. Looking. All right. Being well, a Power Sal, Ranger nerd, they messed up one of the helmets, but I won't complain. Yeah. <laughs> Sal said he's not farting. His ass was blowing kisses. <laughs> Thanks, <difference. Sal. laughs> All right. Well, let's get into some Hasbro uh, reveals. So we got Bobby's buddies here, Ryan, Dwight, and, and uh, Dan. Uh, Dwight's picking his nose. But they had oh, a uh, his eye out, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so they they had some pretty pretty good reveals. Overall, I thought the Marvel Legends showing was pretty strong. Um this one I was really excited for, but then you see build a figure. Um I really liked this version of Ultron, like those last two episodes of uh What If. I thought it was really cool what they did with Ultron. Um but I don't think this I'm gonna want to buy this isn't a what if wave though. This is more like a Disney Plus wave. So, right to get the parts to the builder figure, you've got to buy like Hawkeye and Kate Bishop from the Hawkeye show. So you're buying live act because I know I know a lot of you hardcore Marvel Legends collectors. Some of you are like comic and animation only and not movie. So here you've got to buy 
live action figures to get the animated. This figure does look really good. It's just a shame that to get all the parts, you've got to buy a, a wave that people don't really seem that into. Well, at, at twenty five dollars a figure, I'm not doing that anymore. Like, I, nope. I'm I'm going to pass on this. Maybe one day down the line they'll release it in a deluxe box or mm -hmm. something. But you know, I mean, the prices are are getting so high. You just got. I'm at the point I have to accept I'm not going to have it. You know, I can't. I can't buy. Oh, I just made it. I made that choice like you, man. It's ridiculous what they want for what they deliver. Like yeah. I know you have to pay licensing fees, but no stands. You know, the hands, this and that. Like I have a lot of issues with Marvel Legends for twenty five dollars, twenty seven yeah. out here. Yeah. All right, Tony. You need to take that that clip from from your Legends video where you're talking about like price for a, an action force figure versus price for a deluxe star Wars or a deluxe legends. When you compare that, you should just cut that clip and just show like price comparison. Cause it's like, I'm glad you did that. Like that was, it's like, you know, you don't stop and think about it. It's like, I always thought that my stuff was a good, a good price value, but like when you, when you compare it like that, like, yeah, my package is smaller <laughs> compared to the Boba Fett, but it's like, pull that Boba Fett out and, you don't have anywhere near the amount of stuff that you have in here. The, th yeah. the thing is, Bobby, I, I wanted to compare to compare it to Condor because Condor comes with the most mm -hmm. accessories of any figure with the extra head and, you know, like there's four different pieces that just make up the helmet alone. Yeah. But because I can, because I did a Condor comparison in the big review video, I picked a different, different figure. But also, rather than doing that Return of the Jedi Boba Fett, I wanted to compare it to the... Um, um, the new legends, the Mandalorian yeah. Boba Fett. Oh, Mandalorian, he's deluxe yeah. and he just comes with a jetpack, man. Nothing, mm -hmm. but a, yeah. I'm not buying that figure. So yeah. for for thirty three dollars. Yeah. Um, then we had Dwight give his Galactus a a spanking. Um, Why this this I <laughs> this really rubbed me the wrong way. So uh, I know we we talked the Sentinel to death last year about its weak knees. You know. Um, not having ratchets. Well, there was ratchets, but they were pretty much useless. They didn't work. Um, so Dwight decided to smack on the Galactus legs to show that, oh, look, there's ratchets. And he moved them around. They were clicking hard, which was just, it was kind of a slap in the face to everyone that bought a Sentinel. Because to this day, they still haven't addressed it. They Are did you nothing. up to this, Jeff? So, sorry, can you say that again, please? Are you up to speed with this? Like, do you, do you know the issue that we have with the Sentinel? I do. I was just about to make the comment. In 2004, I bought the 18-inch Spider-Man that had ratchet joints. It was 34 bucks. It was roughly close in size. Uh, every time Hasbro puts out a new big toy with new big advancements, I go, Toy Biz tooled some of this a decade ago. Why are you guys promoting, like, I don't know. I didn't even back this figure because it doesn't look worth the money to me. It's like we had big toys back in the day for cheaper these are i don't even like the fantastic four that much but like they dropped the ball to the point where galactus would have been a purchase had they hadn't consistently been i don't know uh hasbro about it yeah yeah <laughs> now uh, bobby you worked at hasbro is there any communication between the transformers team and the and the, the marvel team like because no. the transformers the big transformers no. have really nice ratchets in their joints yeah no it's there that listen there's no like we're in silos it's like yeah you know it used to be i remember when i was an intern in 2010 they used to have like weekly like the boys team get togethers where like all the teams star wars marvel transformers gi joe at the time they would all like hang out talk to each other and figure out what everyone was doing but it's like if you don't go out and seek out what they're doing no one talks to each other. And it's like the stupid upper management, like the guys heading boys aren't relaying that like, Hey, go talk to the transformers team and see what they're doing. It's like, they're all, they're all idiots there, you know? And it's like, I'm with you, Ryan. This is like, instead of saying, you know, you don't even have to acknowledge a Sentinel. If you just said, you know, guys, we listen to you guys, the fans, you know, and, and we're trying to make the best stuff. So here, let me show you the, the legs on Galactus. You didn't have to mention the Sentinel at all. But the fact that he did that, and here's the thing, man. Dwight's a douchebag. <laughs> you know, he was my boss. He's a douchebag. He's a snake. He talks shit about people behind their back. He's a snake, dude. So it's like, 
to like do this to the to the fans and be like, oh, look here, throw this in your face, assholes, go buy this. Like it's a dick move. It's a total dick move. Um, and, it, and it wasn't just that he did it. He was literally laughing at the camera. He was laughing yeah. at the backers of the Sentinel when he did it. I was like, you can you can go up, show the ratcheted knees, and and look like you say, yeah, probably don't mention the Sentinel because there might be I don't know some sort of legal ramification of admitting yeah. that you're, you know, you yeah, you you to listen. we're listening to you guys. Just make make them feel good. Make the fans feel like they're part yeah. of it. Like hey, we're listening to you guys. And but no, we have to treat it like a joke. Make it the Dwight Show. Good job, dickhead. It makes me not want to back their premium, uh, their big stuff, uh, HasLab. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I was this close to canceling my Proton pack because they added the orange tip to the Neutrino one for Ghostbusters, and I'm like, that's not what you yeah. sold me. That's not what I paid for. But did they really? Yeah, in an email because it's now a cosplay item. Oh, like you know what I said to myself out loud because I got very. I'm passionate about Ghostbusters, if you can't tell, but I was like, they have a nuclear accelerator on their back. Like what? <laughs> what person in a convention is going to get nervous that a Ghostbuster has a weapon? It's a Ghostbuster. They shoot. Proton, you know, the streams like there's nothing to yeah. be afraid of. Yeah. Uh, I do want to get to a couple super chats before they <laughs> this stream yard jumps on me. Uh, Jeremy yeah. Jernigan, thank you very much. He says, Shout out to everyone except Brian, aka Ungrateful Pants. Never wow. toy hunting for him again. Look, <laughs> there's got to be some sort of story here. He yeah, just moved to Wisconsin and he goes into Walmart and the pegs are full. It's like 1985 Toys R Us in his Walmart. And I ask him, I'm like, hey, do they have that new J. Jonah Jameson, the uh, the MCU one? He said, oh, you mean this one? And sent me a picture. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, I need that. I need that. Can you get it for me? He said, sure. Well, while I'm texting him, I'm walking into a toy show. And what do I see at the first booth? loose in the bag for 15 bucks that j jonah jameson and i only wanted it for tony because i know that tony wants it so i'm like 15 bucks don't you know don't have to pay the 25 or whatever they are i'll grab this send that to tony so i hit him up i'm like hey i i just found this at this toy show and he's like you want me to return it i said i'll still buy it from you i don't want to like send you on another errand for me to go return this toy. I said, I'll, I'll still buy it. He's like, no, it's no big deal. So apparently it was a big deal. Thanks, Jeremy. And look, it's apparently it sounds like you're trying to blame me for the whole situation. <laughs> well, yeah. I'm the one that's, that's going to buy you all these. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then we got a super chat from Timothy Hans. Thank you very much. He said, just wanted to chime in with hello. Well, hello, Timothy. Thank you. Hello. hello. All right. Um, Okay, well, let's move on from Dwight. And so they revealed this Spider-Man. This is the uh, Future Foundation, but it's in stealth mode. Oh, yeah. So the, the colors are reversed. My thing is like, well, just give me the regular white with black accents. Same. So what, I mean, obviously what they're doing is they're going to give us this one. It looks like it's on that new retro body, which is cool. Um, but this is like, they give you the one you don't really want first. And then in like six months or a year, they'll give you the one you do want. Can they f please, because I bought a couple of these retro Spider-Mans, can they please give us a hand that's open? Because like, I don't want a fist or this. Like back in the day, the toy had a fisted hand and a web hand, but like Spider-Man climbs the walls and I thought the piece of Spider-Man's open hand was like the perfect, just perfect. I don't know what it's called, but like you got to have Spider-Man looking around. And I don't know, I feel like that makes the toy less toyetic or playable. I call them wall crawling hands. Like yeah. every Spider-Man figure should come with thwip, fist, and wall crawling hands. Like I agree. If I standard. worked at Hasbro and had to say about Spider-Man figures, Hasbro would find a way to basically make an Americanized Mafex Spider-Man. Couple hands, couple yeah. webs, and a different head. You're perfect. Yeah, and then um, they showed off the uh, retro packed Rhino. Build a figure, two new heads. Cartoon inspired, not cartoon accurate at all, but cartoon inspired with the coloring has the wrong feet. Um, but the, the heads are pretty close to the cartoon. This, this was a, a good figure, one. What's that? This isn't a builder figure, is it? It comes on the card. It was a builder yeah, figure, it was, but yeah. they're re releasing it single packed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The previous release was builder figure. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, it looks dirty. But it's sold out. Yeah, this thing it was absolutely going to sell out. The uh, the build a figure from a, you know what six years ago 
that's selling for big money. So what wave was that? Like who was included with those? Oh my god. I'll look it up if you don't remember off the top yeah, of your head. I, I can't remember. Wasn't, wasn't that the black cat wave? Yeah, I think it, black cat was in that wave. Is it when the black cat like, everybody wants? Because she's got the open yeah, chest. Big boobs. Yeah. Yeah. Big boobies, cleavage. Um so there he is. Oh, and they threw in a couple extra hands, open hands. So you could have him dangling Spider-Man from his leg. That's pretty cool. Updated mm-hmm. digital face printing. It looks good. Um, and then a, he looks dirty. You think he looks too dirty? Yeah. I yeah. mean, the cartoon was just like a flat gray and he hit, he just had regular mm-hmm. human feet, toes and everything. Um, I forgot. That's what he looked like in the show. If, yeah. they, if they did this as a wash instead of just like that wipe that it is, or this, that whatever that Tampa or that digital application, it would have been better. Mm-hmm. A wash would have been nice. It would have went into the grooves in his in his muscles. It would look a lot better. Um, then they're also doing these uh, X Men figures in the cartoon style with um, what's it called? That coloring, the uh, cell shading. Cell shading, yeah. So they're double dipping on these. They showed Storm, and she looked good. I thought it was. I thought I was going to get it until uh, Mafex dropped theirs, and we're, we'll get to that. Yeah. Um, and then there was the new, uh, what build a figure is this? The controller build a figure wave. You, you mean Thanos with a different head? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dark side, uh, dark side, Marvel's dark side. Like I'm, I'm really not a, f- a fan of the whole gimmick of build a figures. Cause you've got to buy so many crap figures to get the complete build a figure. But to me, there's always like one figure in the wave that doesn't have a builder figure part. Why did they mm. make it Iron Man? Because there are so many Iron Man figures out there. Not everyone's going to want this. He doesn't have a builder figure part in there. But the, 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 way they, the people well, need 500 Iron Men. I don't know. The way they do it, Tony, is when they do the case pack, the assortments, they always have to have like two of the A listers or multiples of the A listers. So, like, when you have a Wolverine or you have Captain America, you have Iron Man, those ones are usually doubled up. And, like, in my – when I was doing the Spider-Man Build-A-Figure waves, the Spider-Man didn't come with Build-A-Figure parts because you always double up on them. So, yeah. you know, the retailer wants those A-listers, so you end up spreading your Build-A-Figures across kind of the Peg ones warmers. you think might be peg warmers. You know, like, that's the thing. The the A-listers are always going to sell. Like, yes, who needs – you know, a hundred Iron Man. Thing is, though, they sell. Like, well, for the most part, they sell. The retailers think they sell, so the retailers keep asking for the A listers. Also, the A listers are, are, are your way to almost sell the wave. If you have a wave that doesn't have an A lister in it, you know, they kind of come back and they're like, uh. So you always want to like hedge your bets with that kind of thing, which kind of sucks because you lose out on a figure. But then you're stuck in a position where you're always trying to find a compelling way to do another A lister. So it's mm-hmm. like. When I was doing Spider-Man, I was like, shoot, man, how do I do it? Like, I wanted to do that 90s silver armored one. Didn't get to do it. Someone else, some other jerk off got to do it. But, (laughs) um, you know, it's like you got to find you got to find ways to get like certain figures in there. If you're doing. Yeah, there he is. He looks awesome. Is that is that one accurate to the book? Because I it's only in what Web of Spider-Man 100, but that's not how it looks at all. Yeah, it's not. It's it's not accurate. That this this, is this one looks more like the cartoon. No, this one is the video game, PS4. Oh, PS- vi- oh, the video game, that's right. Yeah. Oh, that's what it's supposed to be? Yeah. I, that's, dude, that's I what love it's... that game. I would have bought it. I thought it was just a poorly made figure that didn't look like the comics. So I was like, I'll pass. Because the spider armor was in everything when I was a kid, but it was only, like I said, I, I'm pretty sure it's in Web of Spider-Man 100 because it gets frozen and shattered into a million pieces in that issue. So, like, it's a one appearance thing that kept getting put in merchandise. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Yeah, it was a really yeah. short run. I think it had a... A Marvel Universe Series One card. God, those doesn't Big Bad Toy Store still sell those figures? Those weird Marvel Universe figures, like they found an old backlog of them or something. Jeez, yeah, really? they found they found old old new stock of some Toy Biz stuff. Yeah, from like the mid nineties. Yeah, they wow. they might still be on their site. Did they, they find it in the same warehouse where they found all that mask stuff? <laughs> they could have. I mean, they they found that salacious crumb. 
and like hookah pipe set accessory set for Jabba's Palace. They found a whole bunch of those. Those were up on Big Bad and Entertainment Earth for a long really? time. Oh, like the vintage ones? Vintage Kenner. Yeah, really? that was just like a year or two ago. Interesting. Hmm. Uh, Blue Marvel. Uh, the new character's never been in the line. I don't really know anything about this character. Madam really? Hydra. I, I want to get that character simply because um, the head actually looks like someone I served with in, in Iraq, so... Hmm. Um, seems weird, but I'm probably going to pay twenty five dollars for some head. Will that come out wrong? Um, <laughs> no, I, I I really want that head to um, yeah, and I'll probably I'll, I'm probably going to have to buy another rollout now from um from Bobby to customize it. <laughs> yeah. Um. See, and that's what it is now. It's like, well, what could I use from this figure on like an Action Force figure? How could I? Oh, the head. Okay. Or the hands from J. Jonah Jameson. All right. When I, uh, when, I saw that, when I saw that head, the first thing I thought of was Inferno from Running Man. If any of you oh, yeah. Yeah. looks just like him. It does. Yeah. Wait, don't they base certain Marvel legends off of actors like in weird passing? Like I think I read I thought I read something recently. No, like, you're not allowed to. Person. You're not allowed to. I didn't think they were illegally allowed to, but I thought they were like, this is like a, it's like a passing whatever. Like you couldn't. No, no, you can't do it unless it's officially approved, like by the actor. So like when you're doing MCU characters, it's not like Lucasfilm. Lucasfilm owns the actor's likeness, so they don't have to get their approval. When we're working on MCU stuff, we have to get that specific actor's approval besides Marvel. Um, You know, so it's like, they're really strict about, likenesses and uh like you can't even do hasbro employee likenesses the last person to ever get a likeness on a figure this guy right here yep Iceman from the x-men box set yep yep what? i got that i opened that box set that fig that ice man broke straight out of the box yeah those are the old <laughs> bodies man those things suck I, I i i didn't know anything about this what is it what is Where it what have i gonna buy i've said this i talked about this like 10 times where have you been yeah, I, I, only, I only watch your stuff when you're on my channel. <laughs> <laughs> so there's you're, a you're, there's, on, you're on what Iceman figure? Yeah, the, so they're all new, the all new X Men Toys R Us box set from 2015 or 14, 2014. Yeah, yeah, it has all the first appearance looks of like Beast and Jean Jean Grey and Cyclops. That one. Yeah, yeah, that Iceman head is is Bobby. Cool. Uh, so for Bobby, yeah, there is a uh updated Mag Madam Hydra on an old female body, like, like that new female body they have is pretty good. Um, but it'll be a while before they phase out all these old molds with the single jointed elbows and, and pins and everything. That was the only okay. figure in the way I thought about buying, yeah. Well, this one, this one here, I actually got four of these. Uh, is, is Maria Hill Quake? Is that what I'm looking at? Is this like double as no. a Maria Hill figure? No, okay. I was going to ask that too. So this is a Quake figure with a Maria Hill head. So you could buy two and have both characters. Okay. So oh. like, like you, you could slide these gauntlets off and change the hands, swap the head, and you have Maria Hill. Or you could have Quake. Um, I, I got four, so I could have two more uh, female Shield agents. And get double so, the head. <laughs> yeah, double the head. <laughs> uh, and this is the new body. Pinless, double joints. I think it looks pretty good. Uh, Speedball. We, we've we needed Speedball for a long time. He's never been a Marvel legend. Um, so they got That's two a... more characters to do to finish off the... Uh, uh, what's the team? The, the new, new Warriors. Warriors. Yeah. The but, only I mean, reason I thought about him was because of uh, his implications in Civil War, and I thought it'd be kind of cool to maybe like have him with like an exploding school or something. But like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or or something. Look how much of this package is empty. It's there's ugly. no yeah. There's no hands. There's no effects. There's nothing. I, there's this big build a figure piece, but it's just it's just so empty, and it's twenty five dollars. Do you think it's because like? Speedball fans will be excited to get it and don't care, and therefore they can just be like, oh, we'll put this piece in there. I think it's because they put the budget for this wave into uh, Quake and this guy, um, US a, Agent. 
there's a budget to this one because isn't this i thought this was the same face as that 2015 captain america the werewolf one yeah <laughs> different head same body okay oh okay so bobby you you can speak to that like so they they have a budget to work with and that's yeah. basically the budget for the whole year um it goes by by waves by wave okay. so, like you know kind of what what your budget is for that wave so you're like, okay, here's my budget. I know I have to do, if I have movie characters, I know I have to do X movie characters. Then you're like, all right, do I put all my tooling into one whole new figure and then do a bunch of repaints or do you kind of spread it around? So it's like, you know, going back to my Spider-Man waves again, it's like, you have to look to see like Hydro Man. Like, okay, I was like, all right, I can, I can do Hydro Man by using that Luke Cage body. I only have to do new effects and a new head. So that's not much. Um, you know, but that wave, I think, what did I have? That was the movie wave with Mysterio. So Mysterio mm -hmm. was an all new figure. Movie Spider Man, all new figure. All that shit eats up a lot of your budget. So you don't really. It, it's you know, it's it's rare that that you do a movie wave where you get to tool an all new figure that's not a movie figure. So it's the movie figures kind of kind of suck the life out of you. So it's cool that they get to do waves like this now, where it's more like all classic stuff or even like you know what if stuff or whatever, but they can start putting more tooling into the classic stuff rather than, you know, movie stuff that, that weighs you down. Weird yeah. question about the movie stuff. So like Spider-Man suit doesn't really change much between like the beginning, that black and red suit that'll have in say the one movie and then it'll be back in no way home. Do they like re-sculpt the whole figure? Is there like a way, do they have to, or could they just be like, if it's the same suit, we'll put the same figure in a new box and then I mean, spread so, it sometimes around. We can, sometimes we can get away with it. So like when I did the MCU 10th anniversary uh, Spider-Man Iron Man 2 pack, that Spider-Man suit was correct. But when, when we, when we did the first version of that figure, we had his web shooters wrong on the, on the Iron Spider costume. So, because we were going off um, concept art. So for that one, I tooled new forearms to get, or either forearms or secondaries to slide over the wrist to get the costume accurate. So, you know, things happen like that because very rarely do we get accurate costumes uh, to start a figure. We're always working off concept art. So nothing's ever going to be accurate, but then you get like almost like a second chance and you get to redo stuff. So... Um, that's where you see like things, you know, corrected a, a second time around on, uh, on movie characters, mm -hmm. but if we can reuse, we'll reuse, but it's also like Marvel doesn't reuse a lot of costumes from movie to movie that much. So they're changing a lot of stuff all the time. Um, but you know, when we can do it, we can do it. I think half of the new costumes they throw in these movies is just to make more merchandise. Oh Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean Spider Man. How many different suits did he wear in the last? Wasn't the one Inside Out? Because the, the joke mm -hmm. was that was yeah, the black, the black and gold costume like, was in, the black and gold one was Inside Out. Like, I went to the store and I looked at all these ones, and I'm just like, and I'm the big Spider Man guy. I I don't I don't know. I'm I'm excited for what's next. The Maguire, Garfield, and all that stuff. I thought we'd be getting those waves now, but I guess not. I guess it's got to come out in the summer. Yeah, I don't think the that Hasbro knew, you know, officially knew that Toby and Andrew and all these guys were going to be in the movie until it was too late. Cause it oh, takes yeah. about what a year from, from design. Yeah, they, probably, they probably kept that under wraps big time. There was no yeah. way they were going to, they were going to leak that, you know? Yeah. I do have some super chats piling up here. So I'm going to get to a few yeah. uh, Tony Robles. Thank you very much. He says, hope y'all are having a damn good day. By the way, Bobby four steel brigade figures is acceptable. Don't want to be the dude with 4,000 Kenner troopers. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I mean, I have nine. To, to each his own, bud. To each his own. <laughs> uh, thank you, Tony. Oh, is this is this about my comment in the last one? What was the comment about, about me only ordering four of the the special the night ops? Is that what you? Oh, about? I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I would say six minimum. That's what I got. Yeah, they got minds like elephants. These guys. I mean, listen, <laughs> Tony. I'm a real fan, though. Oh, you know, I'm a I'm a real fan. I'm not one of these fake yeah. fly by night, you know. A real fan of what, action force. <laughs> Sorry. Huh? Wow. Got Sorry. hot in here. 
A real, fan, a real fan of Action Force. Where's yes. your thousand dollar card at Desert? I know. <laughs> I know. Fine. Wow. You got me on that one. Uh, toy connections. Thank you very much. He says, speaking of toy hunting, you driving up this way for tomorrow's show, Ryan? I need a selfie where it looks like I am holding laser pants for ransom. Rain check on that, dude. Um, I didn't get my uh, uh, COVID test done in time, so I can't get into Canada. So uh, I think they're doing another show in the fall, and I'll try to come to that one. Thank you for the super chat. And then we got a super chat from Matt Talon. Thank you. He says, it's funny how Bobby's figures come with stands, and they stand up by themselves perfectly fine. That's very true. Remember, Has Hasbro loves their customers. Yeah, I've only got like half of my Action Force figures on stands because they stand so well. It, it is quite uh, quite ironic, isn't it? Like the, the, yeah. the one line where the only time I have issues standing these figures up without stands is when they're wearing the backpacks. Um, and yet they come with these amazing stands. You can put them in. Like, ooh, fucking hell, I nearly knocked them over. I love the pose I got this guy into. You'd never get him to stand like that without a figure stand, so... Yeah, I've got some that are uh, one-footed running stands, right? Poses on stands. They've been like that for for well, two months. What I got them two months ago, so they work well. And then we got a super chat from Doctor Coffin Nails. Hey. Thank you very much. He says, "When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things." First Corinthians thirteen eleven. Just kidding. I like toys too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Doctor Coffin Nails. He is a regular super chatter on world class bullshitters. Oh, dude, he's beyond a super chatter. He's a friend of yeah. our channel. He comes out to Horror Hound. Uh, we go to dinner, all of us. Like he's a part of the second floor crew. That's what we call our people that come. Like Ryan, we met you uh, at Star Wars Celebration twenty nineteen. Mm -hmm. You would have been. Yeah, you would have been part of that crew by our new definition. So it's just fun. It's our convention people, so we can you know meet them, hang out. Yeah, meeting up with you guys, you know, all all you guys. It was you and Kendo and um, Nick uh, and Nick. No, Nick wasn't there. We were all there at celebration. You might have just okay. only run into them at different times. Okay, that bar got crowded fast. <laughs> that was, but that was that was the best part of the the weekend for me. That was great. Oh my god! Hanging out with you, everybody. I would. Oh god! It was yeah. one of my favorite weekends of all time. Seriously. Uh, let's see here. My figure culture. Thank you very much. He says, Bobby, what's your thoughts on Lucasfilm renewing the license with Hasbro after the Haslab debacle? Also, why do you think Black Series figures are being pushed out over a year now? World class bullshitters really enjoy your content. Cheers, Jeremy. Thank, Thank you. you. Um. All right. Well, there's a lot there. Um. So your thoughts I mean, on Lucasfilm renewing the license? I mean, listen, they're, they're like they're the big dog. Like they're the number one toy company. Why would you not? Why would you not go with them? It's like you kind of switch when like things aren't working. Like look at a perfect example. Like look at uh, Jax, Mattel, WWF, WWE, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. Jax has done it for years. They went super, super deep. I think they saw it like, all right, well, how much more? How much deeper can we go with this? And they're like, let's try out something different. Um, but you know, WWE takes more chances. Whereas I think, you know, the, like, uh, like Disney Marvel Lucasfilm, I think they're a little more conservative with the way they think they're like, all right, well, we got a good relationship with them. We make billions of dollars, like just stick with what works, you know, the, mm -hmm. to, to like, yes, the, the rancor was a debacle and a PR nightmare. And, but it wasn't like one of those things that was enough to ruin a relationship. It's like, that's one thing. Um, but you know, it's, it comes down to the dollar, man. Um, you know, I know that when I was there right before I left in 2018, we were putting a huge bid together because, you know, we knew other companies were vying for the, the Marvel and the, the star Wars license. So I I'm sure Mattel put, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars towards their pitch for, for those licenses. But at the end of the day, you know, they have a good relationship with Hasbro. Hasbro stock is worth more. You know, all that stuff's a factor. So, I'm, you know, it's it's not surprising. I wanted to see them go somewhere else, you know, because it's like you only get better when you have better competition. 
It's like the Monday Night Wars. How did WWE get better? To me, it's WWF and always be WWF. How did it get better? It got better because WCW was so good. And it's like you're never going to get better unless you have comp- good competition. Look, WWF is stale now. AEW is yep. fantastic. Maybe this will help them. So it's like you need the better competition. So is that why you know, G.I. Joe is getting better? Hmm. I, hey, listen, man, they're, they're <laughs> doing some things right. Well, I'm sure we'll get to that. But, uh, but yeah, man, you know, it's about the dollar. You know, they got to Bobby, I didn't know you were a wrestling guy. I was a wrestling guy until 2000. When did Austin leave? 2003? 2004? Yeah. 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 WrestleMania I'm one of those like longtime fans that still watches out of, you know, I don't know, out of, I guess, loyalty, even though I hate mm-hmm. it. Like I'm going to WrestleMania in a couple weeks out of habit. Like I've been a bunch. And when you brought up the WWE figures, I'm like, I got Shawn Michaels chilling here. So I can't like <laughs> get over it. But I did want, I had a question though. When you talked about how the WWE is a little more open with like interpretation and things, is there just like, Maybe certain brands aren't as valued as much. So, or is it just more of like their own personal ethics to the I think it's you know, their, own, their own personal ethics? Like, look at look at how WWE let Mattel do zombie figures of their characters. Marvel had Marvel zombies in the comics. Do you know how many times we pitched Marvel zombies to them for figures? And they're like, nope. You can't see Captain America as, as a zombie. You can't see this person like this. You can't see, and we're like, it's in the comic. Right. Diamond and the Selects like, was doing well, it at the same time. Exactly. Marvel Select because Marvel Select doesn't, it's not an age grade towards kids. They oh. said you're an age grade towards it. However, just like everything, just like when I was working on the World War II Captain America and Jesse said you can't have World War II guns, and I was like, You're an idiot. And then I leave, and then I guess they won the battle because guns ended up in Captain America. But it's like yeah. Wait, Punisher can have guns, or sometimes Deadpool can have guns, but sometimes he's got to have space guns. They don't even know their own rules. It's almost like, what's the rule of the week there? It changes constantly. And that's the thing. It's like, the zombies was a perfect example. Then it was like, all right, well, now I see that they did a Captain America zombie. I can't tell you how many calls I was on with Jesse where he was like, you can't show a hero as a zombie. Maybe we can get a villain. Can't do a hero as a zombie. I remember I wanted to do for Comic-Con... I wanted to do an old man Logan set with Red Skull with the Captain America mask on. And they were like, can't show Red Skull with the Captain America mask on. That's our hero. You put it in the comics that way. So you guys are doing your own shit. Like, and then you're making up rules on the fly of how people can't use this stuff. It's like, we're trying to make this stuff for fans and we're trying to give them stuff based on the content you created. So if you're telling me you created the content, but it's, you can't use it. It's like, that's silly, you know? Um, so it's like, that's where WWE is like, yeah, man, do He-Man WWE figures. Do He-Man, do WWE Turtles figures. That's awesome that they're so open to crossing that and doing stuff because it's cool. Whereas Star Wars and, and Marvel are just like, nope, got to follow our rules. Characters have to be the characters. Can't break frame. Like, man, you guys are too, they are like, too serious about their own stuff and it's it 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 ruins toys that we could be making Mm -hmm. i know star wars collectors are very persnickety because i'm one of them uh (laughs) like where would you go if let's say you you had the choice to give another toy company the star wars master license who's going to do something exciting that's going to get you to you know buy again and that's the thing that's that's what it comes down who knows what mattel showed them in their pitch who knows um maybe i don't know Huh? I didn't realize there was a pitch. That's cool to me. Like, well, yeah, because it was like, like I said, in 2018, we knew that, you know, because we had some freelancers that did work for us that did a lot of work for us. And then all of a sudden we were told, hey, we can't use this person anymore. And it turned out like they they posted something on Facebook that they were working on something top secret. And then someone found out that this this particular freelancer was hired by Mattel to work specifically on Marvel stuff for a pitch for Marvel to, you know, to, to pitch for the license in 2019. Um, but luckily, you know, none of that worked. I mean, I was, listen, I was there and I saw some of the stuff we were pitching for to keep the license. And I was like, geez, we're going to lose this thing. But like, like I said, at the end of the day, they also, they got to look at companies at the time. Mattel stock was like six bucks. Hasbro's was a hundred. That stuff means a lot 
definitely means a lot. Yeah. Stability of a company. They don't care about I, what do they what do they give a shit what product they put out? They're like, we're gonna put out movies, the product will sell itself. You know, that's that's what they're thinking in their mind. Like, might as well be with a company that we know has stability. As a collector, I wouldn't want Mattel to have it. And really, like you said, who yeah. who else who else is there? I mean, yeah, Hasbro it's, it's, almost it's, has a monopoly on this. Hasbro's Hasbro's hands. I mean, look, uh, you know, Jack's got or uh, who got the the DC license? Uh, Spin Master. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, it's cool to see another company get a shot at it, but at the same time, man, they're putting out crap, dude. That three and three quarter line is garbage. Um, yeah. You know, so it's like, you know, it's not, grass isn't always greener, I guess, you know? Yeah. Um, I was, what I was really hoping for was, because I'm a DC guy, not a Marvel guy, yet I was working on Marvel. And I was hoping we would lose the Marvel license, but then gain the DC license, then I'd get to work on DC. But none of that happened. <laughs> All right. Well, we got some more super chats. Um, a world made of cardboard. Thank you very much. He says, Bobby, on average, how long does Action Force tooling last? and degradation set tooling. in oh sorry action figure tooling last and degradation it, set in it, it, it could last years and hundreds of thousands of runs but it, it's a matter of how the tools are stored you know if they're stored mm -hmm. correctly and used often and cleaned often then yeah they'll last a really long time um but you know if, if you use something and then don't use it for 10 years you might go to use that tool again it might be rusty and then when you go to clean it it might be deteriorated at that point so uh you know how it's how it's kept is is a big factor it's there's no not really like a set time frame on how long it lasts for right, they that use that kit go ahead, oh, go ahead sorry I was going to ask about the Millennium Falcon. I think that's what you're about to say too. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> I was going to say they they use that Kenner Millennium Falcon mold up until the early 2000s. Well, talking like 25 years. But wasn't yeah. that Tony? You might be able to help with this. Michael might might have been able to help with this. Also, didn't Palatoy retool some of those molds, like the X-wing and stuff like that? So when Hasbro went to use it in Power of the Force Two, it wasn't technically the old Kenner molds. It was the Palatoy molds that were later that they actually still had. So um, the Millennium Falcon didn't get changed. Okay. Um, but but it, that doesn't mean it's not necessarily um, a Palatoy one because in the, in the late 70s, early 80s, when Palatoy got the license to produce it in the UK, the figures were being made in the Orient. The vehicles were, were being made in the United Kingdom. So they've obviously sent them copies of the tooling um but yeah they did retool um the x-wing and the land speeder because they took the electronics out of the x-wing um so it's right. it's slightly different okay still lasted a long time uh the canuck thank you very much he says question being a new patreon member who gets the money for super chats tony laser pants some other random <laughs> sucker see you at joe fest <laughs> That's a real personal question, like asking yeah. a girl how many people they slept with. Hey, let me ask you a real <laughs> personal question and expect you to answer it. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. What 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 I will say is that um, you know, me and me and Ryan have a, a happy with the agreement, and Bobby's just a glutton for punishment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, the Canuck. A um, couple more, real quick. Super Don 3 or Soup Sup Don Soup Don 3. He says, Thank you, Bobby, for zero twist ties and action force packaging. Yeah, we ain't got time for that. Nah, mm -hmm. no time for that. Uh Jeff McElway, thank you. He says, about got about goddamn time a Jeff is guest starring. Jeff's are the best. Agreed. We are. We are. <laughs> thank you, Jeff. And Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> Wes Robinson, thank you very much. He says, Bobby, do you have to pay likeness rights for weapons or do firearm companies just not care? Like Transformers had to pay likeness rights for alt modes for the cars. Um, I don't want to open up a can of worms here. Um, G.I. Joe's been doing real guns for years. Um, at this point, it's kind of like a, a thing we're just kind of doing. Uh, I, I'm gonna walk away from that one. I don't want to get into that. Thank you, Wes. I, I what, what I'll say is, where where do you draw the line? So, 
you have a NECA Gremlins figure comes with a beer stein. Like, does someone own the copyright on a beer mug or what, whatever whatever it is? <clears throat> um, I think a little bit of common sense somewhere. Um, I, but, I noticed... well, here's an example, right, Bobby? Desert Rat's rifle. Yep. You don't know if that's a Bushmaster or a Colt or a DeMarco. Or yeah, whatever. exactly. You don't know. Exactly. It 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 just it looks like an M4. So yeah. and to save Bob be a lawsuit, I'm not gonna tell you what it was. <laughs> yeah, like there's M4 platforms, there's AK platforms. How many companies make them? Tons. Yes. You know, a yeah. night how many companies make 1911s? Mm-hmm. I have three from three different companies. So you know. Yep. All right. <clears throat> Robert Diaz, thank you. He says no guns allowed with newer DC figures. Has got to be hurting their sales. Maybe I, I don't know. Todd McFarlane oh. said uh, he has the best-selling action figure line in the market right now. So all I can say from personal experience is, like right here, I was collecting these are Mafex, uh, you know, Dark Knight Rises and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, Batman didn't come with his pulse rifle. There's no armored Batman. There's no Joker. I'm not buying them. Um, the only reason I had the Hush Joker is because I forgot I pre-ordered it. But I I do take a stand, especially. First off, I think DC and Warner Brothers edict with this is stupid. Secondly, um, you advertise that it's coming with a gun. That's part of the iconic image. Like Batman, yeah. Frank Miller's Batman. There are certain things you can't take away. And so yeah. I just won't spend – That's and it's at the premium level that I have the issue with. Like you don't mm-hmm. want yeah, – I don't need a kid to have a gun or whatever. That's a different topic. But like Batman guns, fake shit, like DC yeah. taking that away, I won't. I refuse to buy their shit. Yeah, I don't, I don't blame you. Yeah. Um, it's especially when it's a an action figure that's not designed for kids. I mean, Mafex figures they're they're a hundred bucks. Yeah. No one's buying that for their kids. Maybe Jeff Bezos yeah. is. But um, I I saw somebody that gave their kid a hot toy as a gift. Like I saw a kid play with a hot toy, and then I like. And then there's a video of Harrison Ford on the Tonight Show, and he's got like a Han Solo doll. He's like, "Hey, I got this Han Solo toy," and it's the hot toy, and he like jerks it around and breaks the leg. I'm like, "Oh my god, please stop." I don't like when people have something they don't know how to handle. Yeah, don't, don't give your kids hot toys. Uh, give them to me. All right. So uh, moving along with Legends, they showed the Herald Thor. It's the year of Galactus. Galactus is coming up this year. So we're going to see a lot more Heralds of Galactus. So they're doing Thor. Um, it's all new tooling, all new, all new body. I think it looks pretty good. Um, this is one I, that I'm going to pick up because I have not made that firm stand yet not to buy him like Jeff. Uh He's smarter man than me. <laughs> uh, and then the build a figure, the controller. I don't know who this is, but someone told me he was in the Iron Man animated series from the 90s. So who wasn't in that show? I had yeah. everybody for a minute. I will say, and I, I have to say this when Legends puts out so many figures, they put out like 50 Spider Man and Iron Man figures every year. When they give us a new unique character they have not done before and that Toy Biz hasn't done before, I consider that a win. I think that's good for the line because someone out there wants the controller, you know, and that helps build out your your universe. I like right. that perspective. Yeah. And then, um, okay, so that that's the Hasbro Marvel Legends. I think we can move on to Star Wars. And I'm going to start rapid firing through these things because there's a lot here. We're probably not going to get to it all. Otherwise, we'd be going three, four hours. Um, I'm just here as long as you need me. So don't. It's your show. You take as long as you need. But if it goes long, you don't have to rush for me. I'm just letting you know. So you guys okay. do your own format, but you don't have to rush for me. All right. Um, but we'll play it by ear. So Black Chrysanthemum or uh, Black Chewbacca. <laughs> I, we might have talked about this on the last show, but I mean, what hasn't been said? Look at the artwork on the package. Look at the figure. It's an embarrassment. I almost made a video on it. <laughs> So yeah. How much is reused the whole body, except for the head? Except for the head. Yeah, it's a new head and the the unpainted harness that looks way too big for him. Uh, it is new, and they packed him in with the bowcaster, which apparently he has in the comics. He did not have that in the book of Boba Fett. Uh, so one of the highlights of the book of Boba Fett for me was Black Crescenton. I thought it was a cool looking character, big black Wookie with a scar and. You know, a, a white streak through his hair, and they give us Black Chewbacca. He, he looks like he's cosplaying in his dad's armor. 
It looks like a chewed up dog toy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you know, his hair is glossy. It it just looks everything about it looks horrible. I've never been a fan of the Chewbacca. <laughs> it looks horrible. <laughs> no, the Black Series has not done a good Chewbacca yet. No, like they, they haven't. Well, I thought the vintage Empire Strikes Back one was decent enough to buy because I thought SH Figure Arts dropped the ball with their Chewbacca. I thought it looked like crap, so that was the only yeah. decent scaled one I can get for my Han. Was that that was the Chewbacca that also came with the three PO in the backpack? I think it was the same mold. Okay, yeah, because I got the other the re single release on the yeah. regular card. So that one definitely had the, like the best head sculpt, but just the body itself to me is not very well done. And I think it's kind of a kind of hard to make a, a good Chewbacca figure, you know, that that's more screen accurate that can articulate well, just because of the nature of the figure, the, the, the hair, you know, you can't do rooted hair at this scale, you know, hot toys has tried it. And that hot toys looks like crap. Thank you. I'm so glad somebody else will say it. I'm so tired of going to forums. It's really good. If you do this, no, it's not out of the box. It looks like a, it went through the dryer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so there, there's Black Chrysanthemum, uh, or Black Chewbacca. It's horrible. It's lazy. I would be embarrassed if I was on the Black Series team making these figures. To put that out, I would, but apparently they have no shame. Uh, moving on with more stuff from Mandalorian Book of Boba Fett, we're getting a new Ahsoka. I think it looks a lot like Rosario, Dar Rosario Dawson. Looks fine. Comes with her white lightsabers. I wish it was, man, yeah, the, 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 that sculpted fabric in the legs, though, that just looks weird. Um, o Omega, I mean. Whatever. What is that thing? This is girl? from the Bad Batch. This is a, somehow they made a female clone of Django. Huh? You know, yeah. Yeah, this is apparently Boba Fett's sister, Omega. Omega. Looks now, like Tony, she looks like this little thing from Eternals. Is this just leftover Eternal stock <laughs> that they put in a Star Wars box? Maybe, I, <laughs> dude. I could see them reusing this mold to do Anakin, little Anakin from Phantom Menace. Like swap the head, you know, put him on all in tan. But yeah, Omega. Okay, uh, she comes with a bow and arrow. <laughs> I would love to see the. I'll see these at Ollie's in the future. So that's oh, absolutely for a dollar. Yeah. Uh, Echo, which is cool. Finishing off your Bad Batch team. I think the Bad Batch show overall was pretty good. Not nearly as good as Clone Wars, but I did like the Bad Batch team themselves. Some of the stuff in the show was a little weird, but I'm with. That's you. the last one you need, Echo. I, I'm probably, probably good. Oh, sorry. No, you go ahead. You go ahead. I was just going to say, Hasbro does a good job with their armor figures. Like, I yep. don't like their Star Wars line that much, but I got to give it to them. Like, the armor stuff tends to look pretty solid. Yeah, for sure. I agree. Um, there he is, unmasked. And then we got the... Uh, <laughs> uh, the what's this guy's name? It says the client. I guess he never got a proper name in the show, in The Mandalorian. Werner Herzog? Werner, Werner Herzog, yeah. He comes with the ice cream machine. And a tracking fob. I thought I thought he was terrific in the Mandalorian. Yes. If you've yeah. not seen him in, um, I'm not a huge. Um, I was going to say Tom Hanks. Then I'm not a huge Tom Cruise fan, and I really didn't like Tom Cruise cast as Jack Reacher. But mm. what made the first film good for me was he played the villain in the first Tom Cruise Jack Reacher film, and he was incredible in that. He was. Yeah. I got to go back and watch that one. I love He's it. a great actor. Yeah. Um, I think they got the likeness pretty pretty well done. I like that the uh, the accessory there opens up with the best car inside. But I mean, this figure screams adult collectible. There is no kid out there that watches The Mandalorian and says, I want that action figure. But isn't I mean, that the right way to go for Star Wars since we keep getting all the data that's like Star Wars fans are averaged at like 34 to 47? Like, yes. I'm, I'm cool with that. Yep. No. Me too. Absolutely. Me too. Um, and then we got uh, the Death Watch Mandalorian, which is awesome. I, I think it might be some reuse from the Mandalorian figure. Uh, I'm glad they didn't go back to the Jango Fett body, because that, that one is not good. That's not good. But this is from um, 
Mandalorian as well. You could you could also put it in your Clone Wars display with your other Death Watch Mandalorian figures. Uh, looks good. I dig it. And then the Dark Trooper. I ordered six of these guys. <laughs> Tony, it? get your hands off your face. What are you? T- <laughs> I want to see them standing next to another figure because they're they're huge. Yeah. Yeah, they're and probably that, like, like that seven package. Feet. That looks like the regular packaging. No, this is a deluxe package. This is oh, it is. Yeah. But he still looks the height wise. I don't know, man. Well, I think we'll, we'll, I'm a little we'll concerned find, with that one. We'll find out in 2023. <laughs> so this <laughs> this is the first time ever that we got techno music in Star Wars when they <laughs> when they introduced the Dark Troopers. It went yeah. all the music went all techno. Yep. Yeah. And then they started flying down to that hilltop to get Baby Yoda. And I was like, man, I'm, this is just a scene from Iron Man 16. I think it looks good. Have you seen the cut of The Mandalorian? So when Luke comes in and starts taking these things out, they replaced the soundtrack with the, the Force theme. Ooh. It's yeah. so much better. It's good. It's, it's good. so good. It's on YouTube. I'll have to check it out. Um, and then Cad Bane from the Bad Batch. So why did they do Cad Bane from the Bad Batch and Crap Chrysanthemum? Why aren't they doing them based on Book of Boba Fett? I would think because Boba Fett started shooting earlier, uh, what, it shot early 2021. So they probably didn't have time to tool it up and get it out, or maybe they didn't even know it's one of those situations. Yeah, early, early like, 2021. Kind of like uh, when when Bobby had to put out the the wrong nano suits or the time machine suits from Civil War or Endgame. Those toys sat around forever too. Like where yeah. I lived, those Terrible. ugly gray. Oh, yeah. Terrible. So we got another Cad Bane, uh, the Night Brother from the video game Jedi Fallen Order. Uh, Ooh, I, I didn't still see have this not this. Yeah, this is a GameStop exclusive. Hmm. Reuse of that Darth Maul they did a year or two ago. Um, it, it's a cool game. I haven't finished it. <laughs> Me neither. And then, the, oh, they're repacking. This is like the archive wave. They're repacking older figures, which this was a big peg warmer like last year. So I don't know why they're putting this one out again. The Lando. Dude. You go to Target now. All it is is Lando's. I love mm-hmm. Lando. It's sad, man. Yeah, Lando is like a perpetual peg warmer. Doesn't matter what version of him it is. He he always sits around. When when we did our our show right at the start of the year, where we talked about our our favorite Black Series figures, he was he was on my list in my top five. Yeah, my uh, general yeah. was almost. He almost made the cut. That's a great figure. I, I picked that general up about two weeks ago. Yeah, it's a really nice figure. I bought one. Yeah. Me too. Uh, they're repacking the Emperor without the throne. They should repack it with the throne. Yeah. And then Dengar. Dengar. I might buy Dengar. I don't have him. <laughs> you know, uh, th- this this frustrates me because I was trying to complete the set of the Empire Bounty Hunters. And I got them all bar this guy. And I said like eight months ago, when I paid $80 for this, oh. I knew they were going to bring it out again. <laughs> yeah. Mm, ouch that hurts and then so th- this one was stupid because this is the first c3po mold they did there's no there's no elbow elbow joints at all but they have a new c3po that does have elbow joints but they repacked this one is it i that's that's dumb that's so dumb you have a better figure you could repack because you want the main characters in the line every now and then right Mm-hmm. You want to put them back in the line, but they put back this the subpar one, the outdated one. Subpar, yeah, subpar. <laughs> yep. So th- they retooled these arms when they did Forlom. So you got elbows, you know, and they put out the one with no elbows. I don't know why. Do you guys like C three P without the vac metal paint or whatever it used to be i always loved the other like before they started doing the gold paint remember when it was back metal uh, metallicized mm-hmm. and all that i thought c3p looked so much cooler back then i wish they would do it in that scale 
Uh, you want to speak to that, Bobby? Um, so the reason why the factories don't do it, it's like really hazardous on the environment. And a lot of factories have started moving away from it. And it's also like a lost art where the newer, younger factory workers are not being taught back metal. So it's like when the older guys kind of retire and die off, like no one else knows how to do vac. But like I was talking to my factory about it, they can start doing the chrome paint. Mm. So like I'm looking at doing chrome paint on some things, which is closer to vac than it is metallic paint. So that's what they should start doing for C-3PO. And the vac that. metal is super bad for the environment and toy companies don't really like doing it. I didn't realize there was any damage to the environment from it. Yeah, it's really bad because of like the, the process of doing it is just, it uses a lot of chemicals and it's really hazardous and yeah, it's kind of a, a really bad thing. Uh, then some vintage collection stuff, getting another clone trooper, 501st, they're repacking Yoda, uh, Din Djarin in the, in the uh, hover tank pilot or whatever trooper this is. That looks terrible. Yeah. <laughs> He's got a derpy looking head and head sculpt here. Yeah. It's hard to get it good at three and three quarter scale though, right? Yeah, I mean this. Well, well, this looks more like one of the Hasbro Indiana Jones figures. They've just taken Indy's head and put it on him. <laughs> yeah, drunk, drunk Indy. Uh, <laughs> Burt Reynolds that got stung by a bee. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you got him, uh, Migs Mayfield. Like, I think so far with Black Series this year, my favorite one has been Bill Burr. I love it. I need this figure. I, yeah. I just love Bill Burr. Me too. Don't, don't you want Bill Burr from season one, though? I do. But you know they're going to reuse this body first, like right? Right and yeah. yeah, that was cool. I do want that one. Um, but I, you have to expect Hasbro, they're going to reuse the tooling they have first. And they'll put out season one Bill Burr in like another two years. Uh, they're doing Costco Reeves for Mandalorian, Axe, Axe Wolves. That is a dumb name. And then this thing. Now, this thing, I'm going to say this thing is cool. But what's not I cool agree. is a $230 price tag. That's now, crazy. Question, can I, if I were to put a Jabba the Hutt figure on here, is it, will it fit like if I put a three and three quarter inch Jabba? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you, you just take bib and, the, and that chair off and Jabba fits right on it. You know Technically, how, it should, right? Yeah. <laughs> I would hope so. If they were, if I was smart and I would have backed the Katana Jab Jabba sail barge back in the day, I would have bought every Jabba the Hut thing because I bought like the Palace and whatever they put out a few years ago at Christmas. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, man, if I had the sail barge, I would commit to this. I don't care that it's ridiculously priced. I like Return of the Jedi a lot. Yeah, they're putting a lot more love into their vintage collection line uh, in like the past year than they are Black Series by a long shot. Like, this is cool. It's not enough to get me back into collecting vintage collection because I've sold off almost everything I have at this point. But um, this is cool. But $230 is uh, – that hurts. They were uh, they were really touting all, all the accessories it comes with. It comes with, like, 50 different accessories between the, the cups here and the rotisserie and the flame effects and all that. Uh, but that is cool. – yeah. That is all the Star Wars stuff. So what we guys want to do, you want to run through G.I. Joe? Yeah, but just before we do, I just wanted to share something with Jeff real quick. So um, I'm going to sh share an image here. Um, I don't know if you've seen this before, Jeff. There's your actual Foley action figure. Ooh. I have seen that. I'm nice. so tempted to like... So if I can be a nerd for just a moment. Yes, please. There's a guy on eBay that has like a custom painted head that's a little more accurate to uh, Eddie Murphy, and the skin tone matches the arms a little. So I've looked at this. I'm like, I want to commit to buy it and then get the custom head, but I feel like I'll be like you, where I put all this money in, and then next week Hot Toys is going to make an official Axel Foley, and I'm going to get my <laughs> custom one and go, oh, it's not the real deal. But I think I'm just going to pull the trigger and do this because a listener made me a custom Axel Foley. I got this costume. I could put it on. I'm not here. It's in Ohio. But, like, I just loved this design. It's so simple, but I want it as a toy, man. 
Yeah, it is really cool. Maybe maybe Mezco will make us one in six inch. Honestly, I would accept the shitty uh, three and three quarter inch from a uh, Super Seven. Even I just mm. want one. Like I'll, that's how you know it's it's the fandom thing. It's I can't like John McClane got one. There's a million Rambo figures. Every Terminator exists. It's not even like a a race thing too. It's just like I like Axel Foley because he's funny and I don't know. I guess maybe Eddie yeah. Murphy doesn't like his toys out there. Yeah, that that could be it. That's why we don't have. Um any hardly any jack nicholson characters but beast kingdom yeah they're doing, doing one. one and those toys look like shit i don't know if you're yeah. a fan sorry if you're a fan but i'm not i love batman michael keaton batman's my absolute favorite design on film i got the hot toy i got the mate or the mate um whatchamacallit mezco i pre-ordered five by mistake but i'm gonna get oh, one wow. to sal if you honestly <laughs> if you want to buy one from me i don't want to make a profit i will sell it to you for whatever it costs i just mistakenly bought five and i went well I really like Michael Keaton Batman, so if I keep two, I'm okay with that, and I'll just sell the ones to everybody else. So if you ever know anyone that needs one, come to me. I'll have there you five. Go. <laughs> I have one pre-order. So, uh, let, let's get to a couple Super Chats here, then we'll get into G.I. Joe. Jeff McElway, thank you. He says, Tony, is that a 3POA sticker, or is it an actual T-shirt? I'm not drinking. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> um no, it, it, it's one of the stickers I stuck on at the start of the show. One of the stickers that Ryan sent me in his uh, in his mystery box that, that showed up last week. Um, <laughs> and speaking of which, man, that um, that Mezco skull figure. Yes, um, I've, I've I've put that back in the box for now. Obviously, I'm still waiting to bloody move house. Mm -hmm. The flight stand because it's got the green. It looks so yeah. good with the wasp raider. Nice. Awesome. That's cool. Right, the moment, but, uh, right on. Yeah. Uh, Sal, thank you. He says, for old time's sake, the clown has no weenus. Oh, thank you, Sal. I'm gonna I need to watch Step Brothers. Um, it's been a year, so that's one of my favorite movies. <laughs> Same. All right, let's get into some uh, GI Joe. We're all caught up on super chats. All right, Bobby, we need your opinion. What do you Listen, think? Man, I'm digging what they're doing. Um, yep. You know, I know a lot of people are probably waiting for me to just talk shit. Like, listen, man, like, can I nitpick? Yes. Um, but it's overall, listen, they, they're doing the right things. You know, it's like, listen, I love that we're getting Rakondo. He's a great figure. Everyone's pissed. Like, oh, he's Tiger Force. Listen, they're not going to do Tiger Force and not give you a regular version of Rakondo. Like, we know they're going to be Target exclusives. You're going to get regular version of Rakondo. Just be patient. So that's why, like, I'm okay with it. Like, I'm okay seeing the Tiger Force stuff because I know we're going to get the regular stuff down the line. I also – I was kind of a Tiger Force fan, so I don't mind. Um, you know, seeing the digital renders and, you know, it's like I kind of knew something was up. I was like, showing digital renders. They never show digital renders with classified. All of a sudden, they're doing it. And I'm like, well, it's just because we only have a few more things ready to ship this year. So all this stuff is for 2023. So people kept thinking like, oh, you know, we're going to get this stuff by the end of the year, like the twins. And then people go to pre-order and it says 2023. And you're like, damn. So, you know, there's there's a whole I can get into that later. But as far as like what they look like, listen, man, they're awesome. You know, they course corrected. I said it on our shows several shows ago. They are doing the right things. Um, the, the one thing I, I am kind of nitpicky about is like they did spirit. Now, Spirit wasn't 100% accurate to the vintage one, and he shouldn't be. He should be like the way Pursuit of Cobra and 30th Anniversary was. It should be an homage to the original and make it look like the original, but updates aspects of it. So when I saw um, Mindbender and the Crimson Guard, I was kind of like, or, or and Dusty. To me, Dusty is the one I will nitpick on. Dusty looked like absolute dog shit. And I, I Dusty's, one, Dusty's one of my favorite characters. They fucking dropped the ball hard on Dusty. If you have that picture of him, I can start with him. Yeah, um, um, let, let's, let's, let's hold on that one. <laughs> okay. But it's like, what I was saying was like, they, they <laughs> should have followed what they were doing on Spirit. Like, that was the right thing to do. Spirit, Storm Shadow, the Bat, like, I told you guys, those are uh, Zartan, amazing figures. They went too 
close to vintage. They went like exact, like remodel on vintage. And I think the powers that be at Hasbro started getting too caught up with, wait, vintage GI Joe sells. New GI Joe doesn't sell, but vintage does. So we should just do vintage. And it's like, yeah, but you can do vintage without doing vintage. And Spirit is a perfect example of that. Mm -hmm. So I want them to do more of what they did with Spirit and less of what they're doing in this wave. As far as the 2023 release date, do you think they're overshooting that a little bit just to be caught on the you know the right side of caution because so, of the yeah, I, th issues? I, think, I think they're trying to be cautious. Um, you know, it's interesting because when I was working for Jazzwares, I remember I got there and it was like they could produce toys in six months. And I'm like, six months? I was like, Hasbro, we're used to a year. Now, granted, Jazzwares had some issues. Like they rushed on things. They could have fixed stuff. But it was possible. It was possible to get stuff out really fast. Then I see the AEW line. Man, that's a gorgeous line. And they get those figures out consistent. And they're fast. It's just a matter of having the right factory and also having the right people in America to converse with your factory to kind of crack the whip a bit to make them do things. You know, you can do, you can do anything with the right amount of leverage and money and costing, whatever. So I think they're, they're, they're probably being really cautious uh, with this, but also it's like, again, look what we have to come out for the rest of the year. We still need the spirit wave. Um, you know, the bats just started hitting. We need those, those Python patrol ones. So it's like, they're staggering oh, that stuff. That stuff's going to be throughout the rest of the year. This stuff is definitely planned for 2023. So, you know, they probably just started tooling on this stuff. So, you know, they're probably trying to gauge interest and they're trying to play it safe. GI mm -hmm. Joe's selling really well now, but you know, I think I think overall they're just being being cautious. Um, yeah. you know, so I'm not, I'm not surprised by it. I mean, it's it's great for me. I can get a bunch more waves out, you know, when they have a few more coming out, but you know, it's, it's great. It's, it's going to be great seeing more Joe come out. Um, but you know, it's, it's also kind of one of those things where, you know, I understand they want to, they want to keep it relevant. They want to keep it hot. They want to have stuff to show, but also, like I said, this is the, you know, the last two reveals have been digital renders and it's like, okay, you know, I, I, I get it, you know, digital renders, are, are not are not good. I, I wouldn't show digital renders to, to sell a product. Um, you know, it's like if you want to do a tease or something like that, but when you do them, I mean, grant, okay, granted, I'll, I'll give them them leniency because it's not like they put them up for pre-order with digital right. renders. They, they just show them, which is fine. I know like when you do Kickstarters, it's kind of like a no-no to do your Kickstarter with digital renders. You got to show models. You want to show what the real thing is going to look like. So it's like, that's what I'm hoping that they change for Dusty because Dusty looks terrible. Rakondo looks great. Bazooka looks great. Um, you know, it's great to see that they, they're doing, you know, action force torso articulation. I'm just kidding. It's not action force torso, but it's the, it's the torso. It's the torso articulation I like. I don't like the U cut. I like the rocker better. I think you get a better range of motion with the rocker. Um, I wonder if Bazooka is going to be enormously huge, like Gung Ho. Probably he probably reuses yeah, some so. leg parts. Um, but oh, no. that's that's unfortunate because Bazooka was a big guy, he's a little dude. Um, you know, so I hope they don't make him huge, but he probably is going to be huge. Now, a bunch of us were talking in the office when we were fulfilling orders about will we see a vintage one? Now, we may not because the Patriots would have to approve the rights to do the jersey unless you change the jersey significantly which you could you could do you can get rid of the stripes on the arms you could just do a red jersey with just white letters you know white numbers um so it, it, sure. it could be an issue but you know we'll see surely the patriots can't like without a logo they, they can't just own <laughs> The they can, they can own a specific right. colorways design on a jersey. They could they could prove that, you know. I have a, qu a question. Uh, back for in you. the 80s, you can get away with stuff like that, but nowadays you can't. Mm. So I was gonna ask you if it was a time thing, is that, is that how they got away with stuff like that? Yeah. Because it's the yeah. place back in the day. Yeah. Because I see a lot of companies try to like finagle the Pepsi logo or like vintage logos like that nowadays, but I always wondered, um, like I don't own any CM Punk 
figures, but CM Punk has the Pepsi logo, the Cobra logo. WWE it's always empty. Has, it's empty, right? Yeah. You used to so... be able to buy a sticker sheet that you could get online. They had a sticker sheet of Pepsi logos that fit his arm. I didn't gotcha. buy it. I don't like CM Punk personally because I met yeah. him. But yeah, I always wondered how they how they handled that. But yeah. Yeah, so uh, like back in the 80s, you didn't um, – um, the U.S. Marine Corps wasn't, you know, they didn't have like a trademark on their logo and stuff. That's why Gun Ho had the U.S. Marine yeah. Corps tattoo. And today, yeah. it's like, no, it's um, – yeah, they're really serious about that now. So Yeah, that's why you'll never see a dress blues Gung Ho. They own the, they own the copyright yeah. to the design of those dress blues, um, which is unfortunate. It's a great figure. Um, but, you know – well, I got to say thanks to Brian Rowland for telling me who this character was because I had no oh, cool. clue. Comic core. I guess he's he's from a more modern comic. Yeah, yeah, he's from the comics. But you who's, know, you got a comic core. He, he from the Chameleon Comic Comics. Um, Thomas Street But uh, I don't care. Kama it's a cool Kama. looking ninja. The thing is though, when you pay for that tooling. You got to reuse that tooling somehow. And they're like, oh, that's Storm Shadow tooling. We could, I know who we can make. We can make this guy. <laughs> yep. He looks like Dave uh, Franco. Oh, God. It looks oh, like okay. I said Dave Franco, like the actor. Uh, whatever face they made for that ninja looked like Dave Franco to me. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go back. Oh, yeah. 100%. 100% Dave. All right. Let's hear it. Uh, Tony and Bobby argue over Dusty. Can I go? Please well, let me go first. I'm just going to make a, a quick comment, and then and then you can go first, Bobby. Okay. Um, so I I showed a picture of this to my wife yesterday, and said, "Oh, you know this this other toy company's coming out with this," and she just turned around. Grace turned to me and she went, "Copying Bobby much?" <laughs> so, <laughs> away you go, Bobby. So. Here's the thing. I, I take, you know, th this this hurts as a fan because it's like Dusty was such an iconic character. He's he's, you know, based on Ron, um, you know, so it's like this character should have been done right. And this character is so easy to do right. Now, the first thing I want to address is a sculpt. Normally, the G.I. Joe sculptors are fantastic. They have really good sculptors working on this stuff. When I saw this. Put this side by side next to an Army Alphas. Like, go back to that shitty Army Alphas Kickstarter. This looks crap, like dog shit, like that. Like those Army Alphas. It looks just like it. the The shoulders are really bally looking, and they stick out too far. Um, the The arms look too long. The legs either look too short, but oh, it looks bad. And then it's like your your camo is terrible. Like you could have. Again, this is where I'm saying they're following vintage too closely. It's okay to do vintage Dusty, but you got to you got to update him a little bit. Like this is, you know, this it just looks bad. Um, you know, like you could have you could have made that camel a little more digital. You could have put a, a few, you know, a color or two in it. You could have put more of it. It's really blotchy. It's not on his knees. You know, I got to go back and look at my original figure, you know, and see if it's actually on the knees. But it's, you didn't put it on the knees. Hopefully, that like, again, this is digital renders. They don't show his knife. They don't show his backpack. So they're just showing the figure. So it's still probably a work in progress. But it's like, don't show it if it's not ready yet. Like, just wait. It's like, this looks terrible. They're probably not going to do soft goods on the helmet, which sucks. That's like so iconic to Dusty. Um, this, this figure hurt me, man. I love Dusty and I, I wanted this figure to be awesome. I wanted this figure. I wanted to feel the way about Dusty, the way I feel about Zartan. To me, Zartan's the best figure in line. It's so good. It's a great figure. This Dusty looks bad, man. It looks really bad. I'm, I'm upset that this figure looks that bad. Cause I want, I want an awesome Dusty. And I saw it. I'm just like, damn. Wait, well, fuck up that one. Hopefully they work on it before the final product. And, that, and that's the good thing about digital renders. Yeah. You know, you can look at the comments and you can see it and you can, you, but it's like, you're coming out of the gate with this. It's like, okay, if you fix it, sure. But are you going to fix it? And then how long before you show it fixed right now, you, you got a bad taste in people's mouth. Although who knows, maybe people are eating this up the way they're eating up an overpriced Viper three pack. 
who knows? I could be wrong. But to me, it's like I'm I you know, I'm upset about this. I would have got this figure if it was it was done right. I'm probably going to get the majority of the figures. But this one, this one hurts. Jeff, anything Do you collect Joe's? I don't. I was going to ask what the problems were, but Bobby laid it out. I have a tab <laughs> open checking out the original Dusty and a couple other things. So I won't buy it. But thanks for telling me what's wrong with it. <laughs> um. And then the uh, Python Patrol oh, Cobra Trooper. I'm going to weigh in on Dusty, please. Oh, sorry. Yeah, go go for it, man. Um, I like this figure a lot more than Bobby does. Um, obviously, he's looking at this from a from a toy design perspective. Um, I don't like the boot knife because I don't like that on any figure because really. Like, how many real soldiers do you know that actually have a boot knife? Like, you carry a knife on your your vest or your belt, not on your boot, because it rattles mm-hmm. around when you try and march or run. It's Hollywood stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I really hope that the Valiverse vests um, will fit this figure. Um, then I'll probably use this to... I'll probably get a few of these to like deck out that Humvee I've got, but I'll, I'll be getting rid of the the helmet. This kind of I don't know if that's webbing across the chest or if that's the straps for the backpack. I think it's the straps for the backpack. Um, I want to be able to put body armor on on this guy. Um, yeah, that's all I've got. <laughs> okay. Uh, the Python Patrol uh, Cobra Trooper. I'm I, I, I'm not it. a fan. I'm not Love a fan it. of the Python Patrol colors. I like a more grounded look, even though blue isn't really that grounded. But Bobby loves it. I'll look, I, I mean, Python Patrol all day, baby. Okay. They 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 should they should do this as a um um as like a Christmas special release. Cause that's like an awesome Christmas sweater. He's got on there. <laughs> what, I'm, what I'm wondering the, so the face, is it Caucasian or African-American? African-American. It looks like a black guy. Yeah. It is right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And I, I think the last Cobra trooper they put out was, well, I don't, I don't think he was a black guy, but he was definitely darker skinned. Hmm. Yeah. Um, Let's get to a few super chats before we move on to Dr. Mindbender. Ken Rothermel, thank you very much. He says, what do you guys think of Hasbro's Fortnite line? I think they're some of the best figures out there. Amazing sculpts, great articulation. I'll speak on this first. I got the one that's like a Catwoman. I don't know the actual character's name, but that is a fantastic figure. I think it's probably one of Hasbro's best figures. In, in like at least in the six inch scale, the articulation uh, is it it's almost import level. It's really good. That's that's the only one I have because I'm not a Fortnite guy, but I wanted to get that that Catwoman looking thing to go with my Batman Beyond. I'm looking yeah, at it you now. Guys, what's that? Oh, I pulled up the image of your Catwoman figure that you have. This Lynx or whatever. It's a really Lynx. neat looking toy. Yeah, I'm too old for Fortnite. I tried it one time. I thought it sucked. So, Tony, Bobby, do you guys uh, uh, Fortnite at all? I, I've never, I've never seen one in person. Like I've never held one and played with it. So I don't know. Yeah, all right. I yeah, can't I, comment. Thank you, Ken. Um, then we got one from Matt Talon. Thank you. He says more and more action force are being scalped on eBay for increasingly ridiculous prices. What are your thoughts on this? Can I go first? Yes. What, what do you do? Um, people are going to do what they want. They're going to sell their stuff for what they want. It sucks. You know, I, I wish people would be more honorable than that. You know, um, it's a new line. Not everyone was in on the Kickstarter. It'd be, it'd be nice if everyone could, you know, to get it at retail, but it's just, it's just not possible. So, uh, Bobby, that's my opinion, Bobby. Here's the thing. Scalping's kind of like the war on drugs. You'll have some wins every now and then, but it's, it's a, lo- it's a losing battle, but you're still going to fight it. Like I'm, I'm not going to not fight it. Mm-hmm. Um, 
you know, it's it's at the point right now where I kind of have my, you know, the blacklist. And if you're caught, if you purchase from Valiverse and you're you're caught scalping, you're immediately blacklisted. I can go into the, the website and I can I can mark the, the, the customer and their address and their web and then their their email, like all, all that, anything that per, pertains to them, you know, so that person is blacklisted. They can never buy again. And if they buy again, I know the name. I'll I'll just cancel their order. And people are people were caught blacklisting or caught scalping the slammers, and I canceled their series two orders. Like, you know, it's like the things I can enforce, I'll enforce. And you know, people are like, fine, I'll just I'll just get it from Big Bad or something like that. Listen, man, I got a bunch of cool Valiverse exclusives coming up. You're not gonna be able to get them now. Granted, you can have your friend or someone else get them. That's fine. If I catch you, I catch you. I won't just blacklist you. I'm going to blacklist your friend too. And then they won't be able to buy anymore. I don't care who you are. Like it's, it's just wrong. You're buying a $60 figure. You're trying to sell for 300. Like the day you get it, it's like only a hundred went out. I knew who, I knew who bought them. So it's like, you know, fine. You, you can do it. Like, you know, fine. It, it's your product. You can do whatever you want, but I'm also the proprietor. I can do whatever I want. I want to blacklist you. I'm going to blacklist you. So it's like, I'm going to try to, you know, I'll, I'll, if I can catch it and enforce it, I'm going to do it. Um, but at the same time, you know, those things where people are going to, people are going to scat. It, it, it's, it's just, it's just the, you know, it's the toy industry, but you know, it's like, you know, people are like, Oh, someone so is scalping this. You should, you know, you should do something about it. It's like, well, I don't know where they bought that figure. It's a steel brigade. They could have bought it from big bad or dork side or somewhere else. Like, you don't, you don't know. Um, no. But, you know, it sucks. Uh, people people suck. It's like, listen, at the end of the day, um, if if that person trying to make triple on that figure, if that is going to make their life exponentially better, then you are in a worse spot than most people. If you're relying on scalping a figure, then you're probably in a worse spot life wise. So you're already up shit's Creek. If you're the person paying those prices, shame on you, man. Like I said it, dude, steel brigade and swarm are coming back at the end of the, at the end of the summer, like late summer, we're reissuing those. It's like, I put stock back up. People are still paying a hundred dollars for those figures. It's like, I'm, I'm having some at Joe fest. Like, dude, just chill out, man. Like, but if you're willing, Hey, if you want, if you want something bad enough and you're willing to pay that price, fine. But also shame on you. Like it sucks. It sucks that you're willing to pay that price. Like now going back to the Viper three pack, they're charging $30 a figure for figures you sell for 25. Was that not ripping people off? Is that not overcharging? I saw it that way. And I wish. Oh, other- come on, Bobby. It's got in- environmentally friendly packaging and blast effects. They should, That's they should be call blast effects anyway. But it's like, <laughs> oh, so do you think blast effects are worth $5 extra per figure? No. 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 I sell a, a, a package of $3. <clears throat> like, it, it's not. Like, it's, it's not at all. So I wanted people to realize that. But at the end of the day, in the collecting community, you're not going to get people to think that way they're if they want something they're gonna buy it and that's that's fine that's you know if you want it that badly buy it listen i've I've spent absurd amounts of money for things that i wanted and that's that that is what it is it's it's the nature of collecting i wish people thought about it a bit more um you know and it's unfortunate that a company like hasbro is going to exploit that and it's wrong but you know perfect example my costs and I, I don't say this this kind of stuff publicly. I'm not looking for for people uh, to have to hear anything like that. The cost for Action Force Series Two went up twenty percent, twenty percent. That's huge. From Series One to Series Two, did I raise prices? No. That means I'm making less off each item for Series Two. It's wrong. Could you imagine if if I rose the price on Series Two, people would be like, "What the hell, man?" And I, I now I knew that that was wrong, so of course I'm not going to do that. I'm going to eat it on my end to make sure that the fans aren't burned. These are the people buying this stuff. So, 
you know, it's these are the things you have to do as a company. Like you can't get super, super greedy with this stuff. You cannot. It's wrong what Super 7 does. It is. You know, it's it's you can't you can't do you can't exploit people like this with the amount of stuff out there to collect. You can't charge so much, man. You're going to get people picking and choosing. You don't yep. want to put people against each other. Make it so that everyone can get everything. Um, and you know, keep in mind with, with these Joes, um, remember 2020, early 2021, you really wanted a Viper, but they were not to be found except yeah. for eBay for $120. Yep. You know, don't, do you want to be that guy? Maybe no one knows who you are and whatever, but you know, have some principles. But, and it's like, that's the thing. If you, you have to remember if you're. If you're willing to pay that, you're also affecting the prices moving forward. Because if mm-hmm. you're like, oh, I really wanted that Viper. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna pay 100 bucks for it just because I really really want it. Well, now you affected it for everyone else in line behind you. Because now when someone goes to sell a Viper, they're gonna look at the ones that sold. Oh, one sold for 100. I'm gonna list it for 110 now. Because if someone's gonna pay 100, they'll probably pay 110. And now the people are like, thanks, thanks for ruining that for us. You know, so it's like, you know, that's the thing. And then the scalpers are going to swarm and then you'll really yeah. never find them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Jeremy Jernigan. Thank you very much. He says missed opportunity, not including Sandstorm with Dusty. No, he was the Sandstorm came with the 91 version. Yeah. Which had the, the yeah. beret. It was very different yeah. <laughs> looking figure. Um, yeah. We got one from My Figure Culture. Thank you. He says, when Black Series began, figures had more accessories. New Hope Solo had alternate hands. Maul had an alternate head. R2 had a ton. Why do this to 6-inch while the Vintage Collection has begun to include more accessories? Think they ever try a Bantha? I sure hope they do a Bantha. I would love a I would love a Bantha. I still love my Power of the Force 2 Bantha. It's a great figure. I love it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It sucks that they're, you know, dialing back on, on all the accessories because that first few waves of Black Series, they were packed in with a lot more. And well, now a Deluxe has nothing extra packed in. It's just a regular figure, and it's $35. I'll play devil's advocate for a second. Sure. Uh, like, and use Han Solo for an example because I think he's just sitting right here. But, like, I love Han Solo. I got tons of them. I don't mind that this Black Series Han Solo didn't come with as many accessories because this one looks like Harrison Ford. Mm -hmm. And so I may, this is weird to say, but I'll, for Star Wars, when they get more realistic, when they get the jumps, like when they did the real scan, not the real scan, but whatever for Princess Leia and they upgraded the head or whatever, that's when I will bite for new Star Wars stuff. Thank you. Um, And so I think that's where the money is going. I don't know. I mean, I look at Bobby would know. I don't know that stuff. But I'm just saying from like my personal ethics on collecting, it looks more like the thing. And so I see more value because it's more screen accurate. Uh, yeah. I would prefer it to come with the jacket, a thermal detonator, the little ball and like five other things. I want more accessories. But for Star Wars, I'm willing to go with like because Han Solo has always been just a figure with a gun. And so when they upgrade it, if it's just a figure with a gun, as long as it's realistic, I'm kind of happy. I don't need like 10 things. Yeah. I, I wish they would just have more hands. Like, I, you, you know, unless if I pose my Han Solo without the gun in his hand, I don't want his hand to be like this. You know, yeah. maybe just like relaxed hands. Maybe like with Luke, I know they have a few times included like force push hands, stuff like that. I wish for me, hands would be good enough. And I, yeah, sure. The, the face printing technology that they've moved to since the first few waves, that probably adds more to the budget. Bobby could speak on that. But also, and Bobby, you've said this before, the licensing fee for Star Wars is obscene. Oh, it's awful. It's awful. Yeah. Yeah. It's highway robbery. Um, can I can I touch on uh, Terry's comment? He asked about the, the big bad wasp raider selling for 100 bucks. Yeah, go ahead. You have the floor. Yep. Um, I'm glad you brought that up because I definitely want to address that. That was surprising news to me. When I saw that, I was very angry about it. Um, because of my stance on on scalping and that sort of thing. Now, Big Bad is an amazing partner. I love working with them. They're they're fantastic. Uh, they, you know, they didn't purchase those at at wholesale pricing. So it's like they they 
purchase the wasp raiders from uh you know the botcon guys just like anyone else would um you know and that was explained to me and i'm sure they're gonna get pissed that i'm saying this but it's my product and i was not happy that the botcon guys sold to big bad without telling me and you know but it's i guess it was a common thing that they did with big bad so um I am not happy about it at all. Um, but at the end of the day, it's kind of like, who am I more not happy with? You know, it's like, all right, well, again, Big Bad is a great partner, but a hundred bucks is a lot. And it's like, just because that's what they're selling for on eBay doesn't mean you necessarily should sell them for that. And it's like, you're selling them for a hundred bucks. You haven't got your series one in yet not really a, a great thing but it's like again because this happened this is definitely going to affect my re- it, it will definitely have ramifications if i ever do another botcon exclusive again i'm definitely not happy about this situation um i'm not happy about it from a lot of standpoints but you know it's like i you know i can't stop big bad from selling them for for that much that's that's their that's their their prerogative um, you know, the botcon, the wash braider was a, you know, a botcon exclusive. Um, so it's kind of like, it's a me and me and botcon issue, not a me and big bad issue. I wish they would have handled it differently, <clears throat> but again, this is, this is definitely going to affect, uh, if I ever do another, another botcon exclusive again, because again, I'll say it, I'm not happy about it at all. Yeah. And I mean, look, Big Bad does this with every exclusive. They'll they'll buy up Walgreens exclusives and Walmart exclusives and mark them way up on their website. Yeah. Again, like I said, it's like the war on drugs. Yep. Every now and then you get some wins and it's a valiant effort, but you know, it's not like anything's really going to change. Jeff, thank you for the super chat. He says, Bobby. Hasbro addressed retro card Baroness being found. So they produce the product, but wait till they have enough to fill all orders. So do you think some of the new Joes are sitting somewhere? Uh, yeah, there's probably, you know, cause it's like, as they're, they're producing it, like shipments are going out and a lot of times there's embargoes on shipments. So like on the outer case, it will say, do not put out or do not sell until X date. Or it'll say like embargo real big on it. That, that stuff's there for a reason. So every now and then you get a store that's like, oh, I missed it. If you're paying a, you know, a Walmart kid, you know, 15, 20 bucks an hour, you think he, you know, think he's going to miss that? It's like, you know, people don't really take too much pride in their job nowadays anymore. So nope. it's not surprising <laughs> that something like that would get missed. But, um, you know, it does. It happens. So, it, yeah. So, yeah, this stuff definitely is sitting in a back room somewhere with an embargo label on it. Thank you, Jeff. All right. So moving on to more Joe's, uh, Dr. Mindbender here. Thoughts? (laughs) Why? (laughs) This is not a character I ever cared about as a kid. I never had this toy and I I will not have this toy. And as an adult, as an adult, it's not something I'm interested in, but it does look just like the vintage figure. Oh, I'll, I'll just say real quick is it reminds me of like some of the John Byrne X Men designs, like actually be Dave Cochran, but like some of that weird like pirate mixed with S and M, like the big boots and the we- <laughs> like that's what it looks like to me, like like Zardos meets the eighties. Yeah, <laughs> got the slingshot there with the purple pants. Uh, Tony, Bobby, was this one that you guys liked as a kid? I know you probably had the vintage toy. Uh, I I dug Doctor Mindbender as as a kid. Yeah. So, th- so then this is like this is for you. This is for the uh, the kids that had the vintage toy. Yes and no. Okay. <laughs> yes and no. I mean, some things again, don't translate well. <laughs> again, it's kind of like one of those things where it's okay to do vintage, but you don't go you don't go like vintage all the way. You just just the tip. It just that all you need. <laughs> is the tip. Just the tip. But it's like, like again. So here's an example <laughs> where. All right, the original figure had a cape that was like the vintage Star Wars ones. Arms yeah. went through, and but this one was soft goods. On the packaging art, and I, I looked it up just now just to make sure that I wasn't wrong on this. 
The packaging art, it's a cape that attaches to two Cobra emblems on his straps, his suspenders there. Why not make it closer to what the vintage packaging art was? They did the cape that way because that was an easy way of doing it. We're in 2022. You can do things a little more modern. You know, so it's like, you know, he doesn't have, I'm looking, you know, it's like, he doesn't have the Cobra emblems. Like, it, you could have done the cape the, the way it was on the packaging, which made him look a little more cool. Um, I mean, you, but, you could have done a cape and not a sleeveless overcoat because that's what this is. Ex yeah, exactly. It goes over his arms. You yeah. know, I think it, the toy was only like that probably because that's how they did him back in the exactly. 80s. Yeah. So I like uh, I like Mike LeMay's comment. Thank you for the super chat, Mike. He says, give him curly hair and it's Dr. Borat. <laughs> <laughs> but uh i think there's definitely you know the the customer for this oh yeah people want this you know uh the six inch version of the toy they has had as a kid so i yeah it's fine it's not for me i gotta give them credit though like i guess NECA did it where they'll do like the the paint over the whatever that replicates that cartoon style like mm -hmm. i would even though i don't really do gi joe collecting i've thought about buying the ones that look like the cartoon just as little pieces of art because the the faces look cool now they look like animation come to life mm. and then john papa sergio said uh thank you john he said dr mindbender the guy from mythbusters <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you john uh no, you know you know who you know who he looks like let's go back to dr mindbender so if if you watch the hasbro stream you've got the three of them there on the on the stage, uh, was it Emily, Lenny, and I don't know who the other guy was. Then they cut to a guy by the building diorama picking up the f actual figures. And I was like, oh, that's Dr. Mindbender. He works for Hasbro. <laughs> uh, that's funny. <laughs> We're going to get to that, Tony. I got that mm -hmm. queued up. Uh, and then oh, Zorana. And I was... I like this Dorana, but I'll let you talk about it. I'll be back in a second. All right. Well, first off, for me, this, Ep, Emily said that this is, you know, the figure that she wanted to put into the line, even though she's only been a fan of G.I. Joe for six months. <laughs> um, this, to me, just looks like they're chasing Bobby's tail. This is... Um... This is the 2023 competition for Pandora. <laughs> no, no. I listen. I, I love that you you love me, but I mean, listen. The stuff that came before me, like Zer Zerana is is she's iconic, man. You know, and she's part of the Dreadnoughts. Like they, I, all the Dreadnoughts were great, uh, but like Zerana was, she's up there with Zartan. So to me, it's like you got to do nah, this. You got to for me, yeah. Like she was cool, man. But like when, we, when we've had no other dreadnoughts, we haven't had Buzzsaw, we haven't had Ripper, we haven't had Torch, we haven't had Monkey Wrench. This was much later down the line, and I mean, I, I know we've classified they are jumping all over the place. That's why we got Buddy Karma Sutra, who I didn't even know who it was. Um, I think this is a great figure. I'm me just too. not sure on the on 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 the choice and like, and I really don't know why they don't take the mold for the Punisher motorcycle from Marvel legends and release every dreadnought figure with the chopper bike. Mm, that would be cool. I would be down that with that. Be, that would be smart. <laughs> Time to buy more Punisher motorcycles. What, what I'm wondering with this figure is, and if they miss this opportunity, it will be really bad. You need to give this figure two heads. She has got to come with the 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 regular head, and she's got to come with the the mohawk earrings head because the the original figure had a variant. You had earrings and no earrings. So if they if they miss that one, because mm, that'd be a nice throwback to like fan. It's that kind of little thing. You do that as a nice little throwback. That'd be really cool. And. Um, We'll see. As a matter of fact, 
Emily mentioned that on the street. She said like the first vintage Joe figure she bought when she got the job on GI Joe, she went out and she picked up this figure and she actually mentioned like, oh, mine's the rare one, which is with the earrings or without the earrings or, or whatever. Just to, sort of trying to trying to show her knowledge there. So they're definitely aware of it. Okay. I dig this figure a lot, man. Like when they showed this, I was like, I'm in. I'm probably going to get two. Um, so this is like my toy room. On the other side of that wall is like my man cave bathroom. And I have all my punk rock show posters and stuff up there that I've collected over the years. And I love this punk rock chick. Like I don't, I don't, I never had the Zorana figure as a kid. I just like the look of this figure. And she'll go good with Pandora. Right, Bobby? <laughs> well, I mean, yes and no. I mean, they're going to make these these females too skinny. Like they always do. So they're going to look like, uh -huh. like teenagers standing next to Pandora. But, you know, fine, I guess. All right. We got a super chat here from Rock Talk Real Deal. Thank you. He says, I think they really dropped the ball because they should look to elevate the characters. We don't need the retro look. Like... What the F do we have the O-rings for? Oh, gotcha. Okay. The O-ring figures. Yeah, they brought those back. I agree, man. Like I said, Pursuit of Cobra 30th anniversary style. Look at the way they did Lifeline back then. Figure was amazing. That's the way you should be handling vintage classified figures. I see Joe fans being really split over those O-ring figures. Like half of them are really digging it and half of them are like, why are we going back to this? Mm-hmm. <laughs> For, for me, I, I think it's – G.I. Joe was, you know, not on shelves for a number of years. When it first made its return, it made its return with classifieds. And I welcomed – I didn't like that first wave, you know. For me, the line didn't really kick into gear until we got Zartan. And it started to get better. Now, originally everyone was saying, you know, we didn't want stuff based on the game. We wanted it to look more like the classic characters. Now people are saying it looks too much like the classic characters, you know, like, yeah, yeah yes, m make it look like Dusty, but he, it doesn't have to be 1982 Dusty. It can be Dusty. I know we haven't seen the weapon, but he can have a slightly modernized weapon and whatever. But it was, people got excited about having Joe back, collecting Joe again, and they're collecting six inch. Now we've got classifieds. We've got that pathetic stuff from Super 7, the little five POA things. Um, you've got Mezco. You've got O-Ring. Um, you've also got Super 7 doing 7-inch animated. It's That's what annoys me. You're going in so many different directions. If they had have just come back with O-Ring Joe two years ago when they returned to G.I. Joe... I would probably be into it. But now I've gone down a road of getting all into six inch and mm -hmm. they're going all over the place. And yeah, I, I, think, I, think, I think what it is, it's it's reducing the amount of product that they can do on each different one. Like when you when you think if they were just doing classifieds and they weren't going off and turning Baroness into a Megatron Transformer thing. And doing all that, like all of that uh, budget could be on more classified stuff. Okay. Uh, first of all, I feel bad if like, if someone's like a all in GI Joe collector, they want everything. Like my heart goes out to you, man. I hope you win the yeah. lottery because there's a <laughs> lot now, man. Uh, That's why Anthony I never bought anything vintage because it was like, where do you start with GI Joe? And then before you know it, you need the was it USS flag and all that stuff. And yeah, it's too expensive. Well, you, just, toy line. you go to Bobby's house and take it from there. <laughs> he has everything, <laughs> literally. Lucky. Um, Anthony Whitehead, thank you very much. He says, I was wondering if I could get everyone to pray for my dad, Bill Whitehead, a 30 year Air Force veteran. He is in IC with complications from the C word. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I'm very, very sorry to hear that, Tony. Yeah. My, my, my thoughts are with you and your family, man. Same. Same. Really sorry to hear that. I hope uh, I hope he pulls through. Um, and I think we are caught up on Super Chat, so let's move on from Zorana, and we'll work our way through these. Uh, the Crimson Guard is coming. That's cool. 
Um, I've, got, I've got to say, Jeff, this was one of my favourite Cobra Troopers when I was a kid. This is very, looking. very classic to the to the original. Um, I don't know what, what. What do you think, Bobby? I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of out of GI Joe now, mm. but because I had mm. such an affection for this figure when I was a child, um, so, and I love the character in the comics as well. They need to give him the. Um, the unmasked head because he, there was a whole comic storyline of, of with Billy, one yeah, particular crimson guy. Who was that, Bobby? Yeah, with Billy. Yeah, is it is it Billy or, or... uh Fred? 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 Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it needs to come with a Fred head, but um, yeah. I, I'll probably get a couple of these. Cool, cool. Um, yeah, I mean, listen, I, I'm with you. I love Crimson Guard, and when I was doing the not classified line, the six inch line when I was at Hasbro Crimson Guard was in my first wave because I thought it was such an iconic Cobra trooper. And also it's like, it's a nice color pop, that sort of thing. I love this figure. The one, the one thing I'm not crazy about is how small his head is. You got to think he's under a two piece helmet. Think of it like Darth Vader. You have the face mask, the back black face mask, and then the red helmet. So it's like that thing should fan out quite a bit. And it, it sort of did on the vintage figure, but it's like the head's a bit too small on this figure, but it looks awesome. That red and silver, man, it looks so good. I've got a feeling that that helmet is removable, like the red part, like they did the Cobra Troopers. I think that's mm. going to be removable, but underneath it's just going to be a masked head with, with no eyes, you know, yeah. the visor thing. Hmm. All right. And then these are the ones they put up for pre order. Uh, you got the twins, Stalker. They're calling him Sergeant Stalker. Was he Sergeant Stalker in the yeah. badge line? No, okay. but they, they, they had to change it for trademark reasons. Okay. Uh, they hid that humongous uh, scarf in yeah. the packaging because you can't see it. Why but, is he uh, gray? Like, I, he's, he's gray. So I was wondering the same thing, and I was looking at pictures. The, uh, the loose shots of him mm-hmm. he looked more green but yeah this impact shot looks like full-on gray so i don't know if it's lighting or what or they're mm-hmm. changing it or who knows and then um the cobra trooper three pack or viper three pack that we kind of touched on at 90 dollars uh i was all in on this three pack when they first teased it a few months ago and then I saw the price and I was like, no, you know what? I'm out. I don't, I already have eight. <laughs> I already have eight Vipers. Um, I'm not going to spend 90 just to get that. What is it? L- Lieutenant or captain or I couldn't do it. And the blast effects, I didn't think looked good. I, I thought they looked like well, floral arrangements. Well, yeah, they don't like Tony. You could test this. That's not how a blast effect works. They don't like, no. you don't get an effect. And then another effect, like another explosion, a projectile fires out. And then that's, the muzzle flash effect you get. It's not like it shoots and then another one explodes and then another one explodes. That's not how it works. But again, this is coming from the same dummy who gave us a pump action shotgun with a barrel break. Mm-hmm. I'm not, I mean, I'm not surprised. It's, it's just comical at this point. It's like, can you do any research whatsoever? It's like, you finally do, you finally do blast effects and that's how you do them. You thought doing the cool thing was making them modular. No, making the modular is wrong. It just looks silly. Yeah. But hey man, people are gonna eat it up. Uh real quick I'm, before before we get too far past the Crimson Guard, I just want to bring up James Salzburg super chat. Yeah. Thank you. He said it needs a Fredhead. Yep. Yeah. Thank you, James. So can someone explain to me why we got a three pack of vipers, but the twins are single boxed? I'm sure it's been um, brought up on every group, but you know. All I can think is that they're going to do this, and then later on they'll they'll do a two pack and double dip somehow, change up mm. something slightly maybe. Um, John Papa Sergio, thank you for the super chat. He says if you look here, and and John is one hundred percent correct, the heads are on the wrong bodies because they had a scar on one side um, of the face, a bit like the original scar of you know the old sixties GI Joe. Um, or, or was it one had a scar and one didn't? But yeah, one one had a scar on and one didn't. Yeah, yeah, and they've got the heads on the wrong bodies. Um, I remember getting the two pack of these figures in 1988 for my birthday, and 
this was kind of the moment when the line was starting to jump the shark for me. I got given these for my birth and I was like, uh, I don't like these figures. I liked Cobra Troopers, Crimson Guards, Hooded Cobra Commander. I was not a fan. So if that's the way I feel about these, I don't need to tell you how I feel about Dr. Mindbender. <laughs> um, but what was really funny the other day, I, I wasn't watching it live, but I was watching um, Dan Who's live stream, you know, on, on replay, um, his Joe's and Juice stream. Big shout out to Dan Who Reviews. Mm -hmm. um, and in the middle of the stream, he was refreshing the Hasbro website when one of the brothers sold out and the other one didn't. Yep. Yep. Weird. That makes no sense. And and he also mentioned, and I completely agree with his idea here, he's like, you know when people um, do mail order from like Target and Walmart and you, you see the photos online where they all get upset because the guy's like, squashed the card or the box into a box that's too small and bent all the packaging. Yeah. It's like, how many of those $12 an hour warehouse workers are going to spot the difference between Tomax and Zamot and are going to get, and people are going to get sent two Tomax or two Zamots. It's going to be a clusterfuck. Really that could is. definitely happen. Um, Greg Fenstan says, it's also been brought up. The scar is on the wrong side of the face. So uh, I don't know. Um, that's probably not a big deal. That's very Kylo Ren of them to do that, yeah. to change the scar. <laughs> um, but I mean, whatever. I, I don't care about the twins at all. Easy pass for me. No. Um, what 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 I do care about, though, is, is Stalker. He's one of my favorite characters from the G.I. Joe universe because my, my favorite storyline is the origin of, of Snake Eyes, where He's in Vietnam with Tommy, you know, before he becomes Storm Shadow or before mm -hmm. you know he's Storm Shadow. And they're on the long range reconnaissance patrol with Stalker. Um, you know, the Streetwise, Michigan Ranger. Um, and in the earlier waves of classifieds, and we kept getting roadblock after roadblock after roadblock, I was like, when are we going to get Stalker? Well, I need Stalker. And I am so disappointed in this figure. The beret looks terrible. Look at the artwork on that box. That's not a beret. That's a green pancake on his head. <laughs> it's in halfway round. It's too far up. The sculpting, no one in the history of toy design has ever been able to properly sculpt a plastic beret. It's in your hands, Bobby. I don't know if I want to touch that. The ceremonial <laughs> anyway. They're not battlefield warm. Yep. Mm -hmm. No, uh, no. The, the only the only battlefield unit that I think can that wears berets um, are, are, are British tankers, and well, and they don't now. But but they did like back in World War Two and stuff. They wore berets in the battle, but yeah, not now. So there's the Viper three pack with their with the floral arrangements coming out of their guns. They're, they're um, not they're not blast effects. That's the the shit that comes out of that Dark Troopers, that Star Wars deluxe figure that comes out the jets out of Iron Man. Just so we're clear, just so we're clear, all those muzzle flashes are fifteen dollars. I don't know about that. Well, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm I'm sure environmental packaging costs. You know, fifteen dollars, Bobby, for some paper bags <laughs> instead of plastic. Yeah. Oh, that's Big right, because they, they're trying to move away from packaging without plastic and clear windows. Oh well, no! Seriously? Yeah. 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 That's that's why this is a solid box. This is their first like environmentally friendly packaging. Yeah. Okay. So I, if it's just me, but like, have you ever gone to the store and you see like two Han Solos and you sit and you see which one has better eyes? Like, that's kind of my whole way to well, buy toys. I won't be able to. Say you won't be able to do that anyway because I believe this is a Pulse exclusive. Oh, I just mean, like, but is Hasbro across the board doing this with all their toys in the future? It looks that way, yeah. Like, they, yeah. they've already, like, the Fortnite figures, they've reduced the plastic window to, like, just the character's head. So. I, that, I just, I, there's, there's no such thing as a perfect paint job on any of these Hasbro toys. So it's like, do I want right. one with a sloppy eye or a misaligned logo? It's like, Right. You know, I want to know what I'm getting into. 
Yeah. And I, I don't understand the red and the blast effect and the, and the white and <laughs> they, they should just be like a translucent yellow. That's the other thing. When a blast effect happens, it's darker at the base, closer to the muzzle and lighter when it gets out. It's mm -hmm. kind of physics, but Hey, here <laughs> we don't have to follow physics, you know? Oh, Bobby, you're such a toxic man, baby. I mm. know. I know. Just be thankful. Just be thankful yeah. for what Hasbro gives you. I know. I know. I'm just hating. I'm just hating, even though I have a giant room in my house filled with every single G.I. Joe figure. <laughs> like, oh, I'm hating. So mm. just to uh I, I think the next picture will explain these um these blast effects. <laughs> Azrael Azrael Abyss designed them. <laughs> Is that a Photoshop picture? No. No. That's a screen grab from the live stream. Um, he has a shiny head. At, at Hasbro headquarters, they refer to him as New Bobby. Um, yeah, yeah, good luck with that one. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that that's that's everything from Hasbro. Um, Yay. <laughs> yeah, that was a lot to get through. Like that was a show in of itself. All joking aside, I was gonna say they did not enter or they did not really deliver for me as a Hasbro guy who does. I'm well, not a Hasbro guy, but as somebody who likes the lines they produce we're all like i'll pick this one up or this one up like this year was almost nothing i haven't had a hasbro misstep like this in a while for me as a collector timothy hans thank you very much he says they finally have flash effects but where are all the laser effects from their space guns and nerf bullets see they would have been better off doing blue and red lasers yeah effect. like that would have been cooler that would have been cool yeah, but yeah. none of those guns have holes in the barrel <laughs> that's true <laughs> Thank you, Timothy. Um, Mesco dropped a couple things. Uh, a few of them I I really liked, especially. We've uh, started with Mr. Super Jelly from James Salzburg. Oh, um, thank you. Said, uh, that was Hasbro saying, oh, people are paying $45 each. Oh, well, we can get that too. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, James. Yeah, uh, and, prices are going crazy. And don't worry, you didn't miss this one, Ryan. This one just came in, so I'll okay. hand it over to you. Uh, Matthew Matson, thank you very much. He says, I am not buying toys from the store without window packaging, nor from secondary sellers. Those blast effects are trash, and that stalker art, that stalker art is. Oh, crap. Oh, that's a, that's a, okay. That's a turd emoji. <laughs> you need glasses, Ron? Right? I think, you know what? I think I do. I'm 40 now. My eyesight's going. <laughs> um, so we got a couple Mezco reveals, and I'll try to get through these fast. Uh, they're finally doing Robin, and they went with Damian Wayne, which not my first choice, but I think this looks really good. And now that they've done 27 Batmans, we're finally getting a Robin <laughs> to go with them. Looks pretty cool. This will definitely be on my uh, pre-order list. Bobby, how about you? Are you down for Damian to go with your Batman? No. no. no? You're going to wait for a six-inch dick? Uh, Tim Drake is is my favorite my favorite. Robin. Me too, me too. Um, I actually would like a Tim Drake. Yeah. You know, you know. I think we have hope that maybe Mayfex will do a, a Tim Drake Robin. That's who I want to do Tim Drake Robin. Yeah. Um, well, they're doing I, night, they're I doing Nightwing. Fit, they they are doing the '90s line. I think it would fit perfect in in that '90s line. Yeah, but isn't so, Tim Drake a part of the storyline Batman Hush? Like, isn't he in that one? Because they're doing the whole Batman hush line, so I think you'll get Tim Drake quick that way. He's in it. He wasn't like a big part of it. He fought Catwoman when he was bitching yeah. that she was in the Batcave. But other than that, yeah. like, he wasn't. He wasn't really a big part of it. It was more around Jason Todd than anything. Well, yeah. they just seem to be milking that that specific uh, series. I'm like, all right, yeah. well, cool. I'm glad you're making everybody. Um. Yeah, uh, so I May Mayfex is doing Nightwing, which is cool. I got that on pre-order. I would like Mezco to do Tim Drake, Nightwing, and and then Red Hood. I think Mezco would knock Red Hood out of the park. But then there's the whole DC no guns thing. So good thing I got Valiver's weapons. Would you rather wait for the figure to when the window of time is right to where we can get the perfect version? Or would you rather just get a version and then basically add on to it? Uh, so, because I have, like, Batman through his whole career from Mezco, but I got the Ascending Knight, the Sovereign Knight, and the Supreme Knight, right? Young through old Batman. 
So I would get Damien to go with my old Batman. I would get Tim Drake to go with my Sovereign Knight. And hopefully they'll do a Dick Grayson and he'll go with my Ascending Knight. I I, I would get all three. And Jason Todd, they, they could do him as Robin, but really I, I hope they do him as Red Hood. Uh, Jeff McElway, thank you very much. He says, Tim Drake is greater than all of the Robins. Damien's a POS. He is kind of a little brat. Yep. Uh, but I do oh. like that he's trained by the League of Assassins. I think that's pretty cool. Okay, and then Mezco also showed us a new Spider-Man. Do you want to Chris O'Donnell, Robin? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't think I they're going to the touch story. those movies. I'm not they proud. showed off a updated Spider-Man, which easy pass for me. I, I don't really like the way Mezco does Spider-Man. I think it's uh, with the soft goods, it's hard to get right because it just looks like pajamas. I have a it's, bigger issue with that green goblin in the background with that massive head. Yeah. This is definitely like a digital people. render. Like they haven't even, I mean, this is all we've seen of their green goblin so far. So, uh, I mean, who knows? If you're into Mego dolls, this is probably up your alley because to me, they look like Mego dolls. Yeah. Tony, this will double as a maximum overdrive green goblin. You guys seen that movie? You just pop that right <laughs> onto a hot wheel and right through it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I'm a big Spider-Man fan. I love Steve Ditko. He's, you know, the first Spider-Man artist and all this fun stuff. Ryan, I'm glad you brought up the whole, like, whatchamacallit, the pajamas, because their first Spider-Man just didn't, I don't think that blends well. It's mm -hmm. something, like, only in the right scale can you do a soft, good Spider-Man, or not, well, whatever you would call it, but, like, and it looks right. I'm even worried. I pre-ordered the, the Hot Toys um video game version that's meant to look like mm -hmm. the classic suit and i'm worried how like what material it's made of because i have the old uh, 2011 one and it kind of stretches and it doesn't really hold yeah. its weight and so i feel like when i buy a spider-man toy at that scale i'm getting like a couple of years out of it before it looks like a bad toy and that's a big concern with mezco especially when you when they do these vinyl overlays because if you leave them in in a pose like this it's going to crease there where where you have them crunched and that crease isn't going to go away. So you'd want to pose them like for a photograph, but if you're putting them in a display, vanilla pose standing there. I wouldn't leave them in a, in a pose like that because it'll trash the suit. And there's another shot of them. The gloves uh, they look some weird. really bad. Yeah. Those, those, the elbows there look like my 1970s bendable evil can evil figure. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, I, I just don't think uh, Spider-Man translates well in the Mezco line. They teased the Storm Shadow, so we got more G.I. Joe coming from another company. Now, they've already put up Roadblock and... Um, Destro. They put up Destro. And I think just those two. They teased Firefly. He has not gone up for pre-order. but they No, they teased Snake Eyes. They teased Snake Eyes like two weeks ago. Yeah, but they 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 teased, they teased Firefly, Firefly last well. year. Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah. It was a picture like this. It was just like head and upper torso shot, but he has not gone up for pre-order. Yeah, uh, and then here's the snake eyes they tease on the same day. That looks cool. I want those, I want those grenades, unless Bobby's going to make some for me. <laughs> I'll uh -huh. make modern grenades. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, they look, well. The, the reason I say that is they look more modern than the grenades that came with. Uh, the Mezco figure Ryan sent me, you know, the black skull. That was like, oh, yeah, yeah. Was like yeah. Grenade. yeah. This looks really cool. I just, I'm kind of burnt out on Snake Eyes. I'm burnt movie out didn't on do Snake it for Eyes, Storm Shadow, all of it. Yeah. What was that, Jeff? The movie didn't do it for you? I didn't see it. <laughs> <laughs> I watched it on a flight. It was terrible. Yeah. Uh, I have no desire to see that movie. Um, but at least this is like a, it's kind of like a half ninja, half commando snake eyes. Like he's got cargo pants on, it looks like. And then like a more snug ninja shirt or something, but with the ninja head. So it's kind of like Mezco doing their own thing. There's another shot of him. It does look cool. I just, I'm not that excited about it because I'm kind of snake eyes out. Because it's another snake eyes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Of course, Mezco, uh, new Batman movie, so we're going to get a, a new Mezco Batman. The, uh, 
I wish they would have refined that suit more, man. That that cow looks weird on the actor in general. Yeah, I just I don't, don't think like it's a good cow. design. It it makes him look like an egghead. See, I know. like I like everything but the ears. Mm -hmm. The ears look weird. But I do like that this new cowl shows more of his bottom jawline than like Christian Bale or Ben Affleck, where it was a smaller opening. Yeah. Um, I, I I dig this Batman. Man, I'm excited. I got my tickets. I'm ready, man. I'm Doesn't excited. it come out like in a week or two? Comes no, out on uh, next, next, next Wednesday. Thursday. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, is it is it PG-13 or are they going full R with this one? No, it's PG-13. Oh, okay. They uh, put out an quick. article about that was the Warner Brothers' only directive when they were uh, trying to make this movie to talk about how much creative freedom Matt Reeves had. The one directive they said was just PG-13's it. So, I mean... We might. I think we're gonna get something really interesting with this movie. I'm really mm -hmm. excited it's to be watch. Very detective-ish, which I'm excited about. Say that again. It's gonna be very detective-ish, which is what I'm excited about. I'm looking yeah. forward to that too. We got a little detective element in the Chris Nolan movies, but little, but not much. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Tony Robles, thank you. He says, "How'd they get the robot chicken Spider-Man?" That's the best <laughs> go. <laughs> thank you, Tony. Um, so yeah, they're doing, they're doing Batman. Um, I mean, it, it looks accurate to the movie. I mean, I haven't seen it yet. Just the trailers, but, um, Mezco Look, does every, Batman very well. Everything I've seen about the trailers, it looks like it's going to be a really good film. Mm -hmm. Um, all from all of the casting choice, like Colin Farrell is unrecognizable as Penguin. Yeah. Uh, Zoe Kravitz looks damn sexy. Yeah. Um, but as I learned back in 1999 with The Phantom Menace, I will never, mm -hmm. ever buy a toy without seeing the movie again. Yeah, Who burned Before you? I see the film. Who got you? Was it all the characters? Man, I had like, you, you, know, you know the big storage tubs you get? I probably had yeah. three of them all before The Phantom Menace came out. Oh, oh man. man I had so something happened. I, I was... I was uh, 17 when that movie came out, and I was still buying Star Wars figures every now and then. But I remember walking into Toys R Us and seeing those episode one. I was like, there's a lot here. I'm not doing this. There's too many. Hmm. How long will this go for? You know. So I didn't, I didn't buy into The Phantom Menace, but now here I am 20-some years later, and <laughs> action figures never end. <laughs> I, did. I was overwhelmed because I didn't recognize the character names. So I was just like, I know Obi-Wan. And then this Darth Maul guy's in the trailer. Cause I could piece that together. I was like, that's yeah. cool. And then, so my, as a kid, you know, I could get what I wanted. I was lucky, but I didn't know yet. And so after I saw that movie, I got nothing else from it. I didn't, mm -hmm. I was just like, okay, that was the new star Wars movie. And I stopped watching star Wars for a little bit. Like I, I was 10. It, it was supposed to be for me, but it was too juvenile. I don't know, but it was very juvenile for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I stopped collecting Star Wars at that point for like a good almost 10 years. I stopped um, until 2004 when they did the whole relaunch with the DVD set and the new figure style. Oh, and all yeah. That. Then I was back. Yeah. Uh, Mesco also teased Turtles. So we got another set of Turtles coming. Um, I, I think that makes every toy company on the planet now has done Turtles now that mm. Mesco's doing them. But these look it's cool. They they're, it, it looks like a. I mean, Mesco's definitely doing their own thing, but it's very inspired by the old Mirage comics, Eastman and Laird stuff. That's cool. Yeah. I'm afraid of the price tag. I, I think this is going to be about $400. Dude, for this I'm going to commit to the Power Ranger set they're making. That's going to be about that probably more because there's more of them. Yeah. I, I think you're looking at close to 500 or at least for that set. Yeah. The only That's collectible okay. I've ever said no to was the DeLorean because it was a thousand bucks and my first real life car was a thousand dollars and I refused yeah. to pay for a toy car <laughs> what I paid for a real car. That <laughs> and that thing is huge, man. That Hot Toys DeLorean is massive. I got Marty. I got Doc on yeah. pre-order. I just, I couldn't, I, I, I could have worked and saved for it at the time. I just couldn't justify that. Tony, I know you, you want to say something. I've been laughing at this super chat, man. Okay. Dark Vader. Oh, he's back. <laughs> Dark Vader's disembodied charred phallus. Thank you very much. He says, I'm still waiting for a toy version of me. 
They exist, but only those nice ladies on the internet seem to want it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm the only person. Am I the only person here that has this action figure? Oh, the, I actually uh, have a D Darth Vader's disembodied shard phallus figure. It was made and sent to me, so I have a an actual one of those at home. That's cool. <laughs> Custom painted hot dog with a Darth Vader head. Uh, I thank you, that. Darth Vader's disembodied charred phallus. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen that name in a while. Um, either, man. So I got more turtles. Um, I, depending on the price, I might go in on these. I would really like to see Mezco's take on Casey Jones. Ooh, I think they could knock that out cool. of the park. But I'm I'm afraid that they'll just do the turtles. <clears throat> um, Sal made that figure. I didn't want to break the illusion. <laughs> I was trying to make it like, you know, whatever. Yes, Sal, I know. Thank you for making it, dude. Uh, if I could have brought the giant box of stuff you sent when I uh, came out here, I would have. But I have to break it down. Oh, here we go. Yes, here we go. So this figure right here actually saved me a lot of money. It's 100 bucks, but it kept me from going in on Hasbro's cartoon line of X-Men. Like I was like, this is awesome. This is the last storm I will need. I'm not buying any more uh, of the Hasbro um, cell shaded X Men. This looks amazing. I messaged you randomly. I meant to put some yeah. context in it. I sent you a picture. I'm like something, something. You're like, oh, would you pre-order this? I'm like, oh man, I thought I was talking to Sal, who I just will randomly send stuff to like that. Yeah. But I love Jim Lee's artwork. I own every X Men figure from Mafex. I. I go to Hobby Link Japan because they're only $84 a piece. Mm -hmm. And so even with shipping, you still save like a couple of bucks. And mm -hmm. I'm in California, so it's still, and it comes from Japan, so it gets here kind of quick. But uh, they haven't let me down with any of their X Men figures. Psylocke is great. I guess people don't like Cyclops because he's whatever. He's just a generic figure, but I don't think he's bad. Like he was like a figure of 2020 that people shit on. His. <laughs> My only issue with him is that his belt sits so high because of the strap that it looks like he's just like Steve Urkel with his pants a well, little bit. The only reason I make I'll make an excuse is there's a really famous image that Jim Lee drew where he's like got it up to his gut like that. Yeah. And so like I'm guessing it's based off that one image. And since mm -hmm. maybe I'm trying to make excuses here, but it's like, well, it's based on this. It's wrong, but I'll give it a pass. But I do think it is. I'm with you about it being jacked up. But I do think Marvel Legends lowered it way too low, like a Speedo, so they can just kind of do the generic whatever. Like, yeah, I don't think they do their... Well, Wolverine did it right, but the little trunks they do on their figures never, I don't know, match the comic book. Yeah. Um, but this looks great. I'm hoping that her cape for a lot... I mean, I guess it's a cape. It's like a weird mm -hmm. cape. I hope it's wired. Uh, we were talking about it the other day, and it looks a little too thin to be wired, but I... I can't see Mafex doing a non-wired cape because I don't think they have yet. Like all their capes have been wired. I, I know this is a weird shot in the dark. It'd be cool if they would release this figure with a pair of her colored hands as well. Like, you know, black toned hands. Cause then that's how it looks in the cartoon. I am pretty sure in the cartoon, yeah. she doesn't have white hands. So you could like double it up. Yeah, for sure. Looks great. Get three different um, facial expressions. <clears throat> and then this thing. Hmm. I think this looks like an awesome Mark 85. I already have like three of these from Hasbro. This costs 180 bucks. Is it metal? Uh, I don't know. I don't think it's, it might be die cast. I don't is think it, it is. Gold? It they, be real in, gold? they include every nanotech accessory they could. Like everything oh. that he did in the movie, they include. So it comes packed with accessories. But 180 bucks sense. for a six inch figure, I couldn't do it. I, I couldn't justify it. It Dude, looks great. It looks wonderful. I we talked off air about the Mezco being 190 for the two pack. I'm like, oh yeah. This the values there. I get okay, it looks cool on the figure, but man, I would only pay like a hundred bucks for this. I know it's crazy yeah. to discount it like that, but you, like you said, man, there's so many of these Iron Man figures. These movies came out, we're like what four years removed. Mm -hmm. I can't believe there's still demand for all of these high-end Iron Man toys. Yeah. I, it's weird. Mafex is really late on this one. But, um, I mean, you see everything it's got packed in. It, it's a lot. But that price tag was enough to... I was like, nope, not doing it. I got my uh, Iron Man Mark 50 in, from the two-pack Marvel Legends. That one's good. I'm sticking with that one. 
So that was the Mafex showings. Um, there's more we could do NECA, but we're already at two and a half hours here. So do you guys want to wrap this up? Looks like Tony does. He left. <laughs> I'm busting, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I think we should wrap this up. There's more we could talk about, but I think we've gone on long enough. What I will say is the next show, two weeks' time, we're coming back with a license to shill. We're going to be talking about Battleverse Series 2A. Yes. Cool. Fingers crossed. Hopefully, but... We have the figures in hand, hopefully. But uh, yeah. it, it, even if I don't, I've got to get my US forwarding address <laughs> sorted and, and all that. But, but that's what we're going to talk about. So, Bobby, I... you can just leave those on the table for two weeks. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so, um, I think that's, that's the show tonight. Jeff, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. This, when I went to go get a drink, I was like to Jesse, like, this is the most fun I've had on a stream in a long time. I love talking nice. toys. You guys are all great. Uh, hope to stream with you again. Uh, there's an open invite to come on the channel anytime you guys want. I, and Absolutely. the invite is extended to you as well. You can come back anytime, man. This was fun. I'll have to call uh, Salvador and make a, was it six men or five of us then? I'll be... Yeah, be a crazy show. That'd be great. Well, five POA makes sense. So yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have him back, Jeff, and we we've, we've got to have Sal. Yeah. So Jeff, on the off chance there's someone watching that doesn't know where to find you, where can everyone find you? So folks, you can find me over on the World Class Bullshitters channel where we talk about toys, Star Wars toys mainly because uh, we cover the decline of them. But we talk about pop culture. We have a podcast, and I do comics as well. So you guys can. Find the information. Go to wokebusterscomic.com. Working on a Ghostbusters parody right now. And there's just, you can find the world class bullshitters is everywhere. So Google us, find us, um, and get involved. We got tons of videos. And uh, now I'm on this stream. So we're part of this too. So yeah, Google us. Awesome. Bobby, Valiverse everywhere, right? Valiverse everywhere. Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. And well, they should sus subscribe to your YouTube because you're putting out some really good content now. We filmed some really, really funny new content that's coming. Um, yeah. Uh, my new guy is, is doing some great social media stuff. And uh, I think people are going to get a kick out of what we have planned. It's going to be fun. Awesome. And Tony, your analog toys on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Obviously. Yep, we've hashtag Valiverse all over the place. Bobby, did you get a chance to watch the unboxing stream I did last week with Dante and Ryan? I did not. I'm very oh, behind okay. on my my podcast. No, that, that that's that's fine. There's no judgment here. I know you're very, very busy, and it's more important that customers get series two A than you watch a stream with me and Ryan you see every two weeks anyway. But I did <laughs> mention in that stream. That I watched Conan the Destroyer the other day for the first time probably since childhood. Changed your life, didn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, I wouldn't say it changed my life, but it is far better than I remembered it being. It's a very different film. It was action-packed. Grace Jones is awesome. The only thing I don't like about the movie is that chick from the Wonder Years who plays the princess but that's that's like you know the only thing i don't like in temple of doom is willie scott um so a public apology man it's a good good film it's definitely better than snake eyes oh yeah look at that oh we gotta we gotta full screen him oh. <laughs> <laughs> but bobby but bobby <laughs> awesome <laughs> All right. Well, we'll be back, we'll be back March twelfth. We're gonna be talking real serious. quick. Real quick, I've got yep. to show the audience um, Desert Rat version one point five. No. Oh, <laughs> Come in next year from Super Seven. <laughs> Gracie, take uh, take Photoshop away from Tony. Please. Right, please, <laughs> please. All right, we'll be back March twelfth. Talking series two of Action Force, Jeff. Thank you once again. Yeah, uh, we'll thank you, Jeff. It's been a pleasure. Absolutely. And we'll thank see you, you all. Thank you guys, too. All right. <laughs> we'll see you all later. <laughs>